Nerds International proudly presents. This is a bonus. This is this is a, not only is this a normal pod, but it's a bonus episode of relaxing, Test. shitty British weather. Yeah. Oh, there is. A gust. <laughs> 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 Hello, and welcome to the three T RPG podcast. I'm Harrison Hunt, and with me is Nick Lamley. Oh yeah! This is an RPG show all about tabletop RPGs. Today we've got so many segments. It's going to be it's a segment opolis. It is exactly. <laughs> we got what you're saying, where we talk about what we've been playing. We've got the main subject, which is going to be Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Yeah. And then we've got a new new segment called Nice to See That. Then we got brain in the oven, and then we got Jim Bim Salabim. Oh yeah! So if those got items, the names of the items, I think they're getting out of hand. Jim Bim Salabim. Jim Bim Salabim is a good item. I think you're going to like it. Oh my god! I think it has, uh, this is another item where I've come up that's only it's only got one show's worth of actual <laughs> material. It's not got legs, but, but it'd be good. After that, we got electro letters, oh, and yeah. then our world famous outro. Mm. So should we get into what we've been playing? Let's get wriggle on. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should say um, it is raining so heavy outside. We have got the windows closed, but you're still going to hear it. So, as Nick pointed out before we started recording, this is uh, this is free, relaxing rain sounds, as well as the podcast. You're welcome. Exactly. Ambient, ambient noise. So, if you want to donate on so. Patreon, you know, now's <laughs> I mean, the time. If this is weather's your thing. <laughs> yeah, then you're in, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. Right. Let's get, let's get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> one of these. Oi, yeah. What you slaying? So we finished our Dark Tower campaign. Sadly, yeah. Sadly, yes. Yeah, gutted. Yeah, that was. It was a. It was a fucking fun ending. So um, the whole yeah, thing was fun, mate. The, whole the thing was fun. The, the the premise of the thing is that it's a Wild West sci-fi post-apocalyptic world, um, and it's part of a multiverse. Which yeah, the multiverse is like in, it all within the Dark Tower. Yeah. And they're on the 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 layer of the multiverse that's closest to the Prim, which is like the primordial chaos, <laughs> which birthed all realities. All realities, yeah. And um, yeah, the the kind of. The closer you get to the tower, the weirder it gets. Mm. And they just did Castle Discordia, which is like... It was, it was like a dungeon. I, I did it way different than it was in the It books. was cracking. Yeah, it was really, really cool because you took the whole... Well, the thing is, it was... The whole the whole campaign, you didn't have to be a Stephen King fan to enjoy it. But if you was a Stephen King Dark Tower fan, you'd enjoy it even more. That was the beauty of it. It was so well handled that I think it, it wasn't just a kind of a, a, a nod to the fans it was also a very good game and you turned Discordia into a giant mega dungeon which was wicked yeah that was fun man like yeah. it, it had like loads of secret passages yeah. different coloured keys you had to pick up there was challenges that like to get the keys so every time they got to a room that had the key in it boom with a gun well, the baboon, <laughs> the gun-toting baboons were like outside one of the rooms. <laughs> yeah, the remember ba- before that when they was like, right, let's go check that door out, and you were like, smells slightly of baboon, and we thought, hey, he's taking a piss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You thought I was making something up to throw you off, and then yeah. as soon as you get in, two. <laughs> the, the most annoying thing is baboons are fucking deadly, man. They are. But what happened is, it's like, a fire on. I dealt, I dealt the fucking cards. Everyone, everyone, fucking, uh, everyone out, out, initiated. The fucking uh, the baboons, yep. and then they just they just shot them to pieces. They got battered, mate. They got they got eris- like, was it eviscerated? Yeah, there was, yeah. It was like miracle rolls all over the place. Yeah, it was pretty lucky rolls. And uh, I think wasn't that the one when James's like opening gambit shot was like a sixty-seven damage? Or yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like he's he's the kind of guy that in every combat all he ever I'm does is he gut. just goes um he just goes well I, I, I shoot. I hit him with my longsword. He's that type, right? <laughs> but then, then like, he just rolled so well. I was oh, like, all right, fair enough. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the baboon doesn't argue. <laughs> yeah, because he, he just killed two of them. Yeah. Without them even... It's funny because, like, they jumped off the ceiling, ready to attack. Raging at I'll us. I'll shoot them. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, <laughs> all right, fine. All right, moving on. But the cool thing is, like, all the challenges throughout the dungeon, I kind of... Um, I, I was scaring the internet, you know, cool dungeon mm. puzzles and mm-hmm. things like this. And I decided, like, I was going to make it relate to the rest of the game. So, right at the beginning of the of the game they were looking for someone called the magic indian and there there was a a segment when they had to arm wrestle 
sort of magic Indian. Or oh, mate, that, that was fun. There was a section where James had to duel a, a gunslinger statue. Cause oh, he, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, was a, there was a river in there with la- uh, sharks with lasers on their heads. Of course, yeah. But it was it was pretty cool, It man. was cracking, mate. It was very the good is, fun. As I said, the closer you get to the tower, weird, the weirder things get. Yeah. But what happened was is the final boss was the... Or final boss, kind of, was the... Uh, Crimson King who, who kind of owns the, the castle, castle school, and yeah. the man in black who they thought they'd killed much much earlier <laughs> and what happened was is I sent everyone out the room and I said and I spoke to everyone individually because oh what? shite yeah of course yeah, yeah. we had a proper DCC vibe going on then yeah, yeah. yeah that was cool because the Crimson King appeared differently to everyone like yeah. Luther Nick's character you, he was like obsessed with this dark chicken god yep, that yep, he yep. thought was real and then suddenly he's standing in front of him and he's like you know what you gotta do <laughs> destroy them all <laughs> yeah kill, kill the rest of your team and then Ryan's character comes in and he sees the uh, he just sees the Crimson King straight up and he tells him oh did he I yeah. thought he'd see his bro I forgot to ask him no, he said, that, but he saw the Crimson King. The Crimson right. King said to him, uh, "I can make, I can bring your brother back ah, to life. Yeah, okay. All you need to do is kill the others." And of course, his brother dying was the biggest thing that ever happened to him. Big so time, yeah. He he started wailing on the party. James saw this. Um, oh, he was. So, I've never seen a more torn friend than Ryan the other day when he was actually wailing on us. And he was just like, "I'm sorry, you'll understand he later." He, 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 yeah, he couldn't even because I, I tried to I, I tried to make it bits. so that nobody would discuss what they saw. That's it because you were like. Uh, uh, you see the representation that you see in front of you, but you didn't actually name it for anybody. <laughs> Every time he attacked, I went, he attacks you in a manner fitting for what <laughs> the you creature. saw. Yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And then I would just roll the dice. It was so good. It was so good. It was funny because, yeah, Ryan, uh, his character, he started, you know, actually trying to kill the rest of the party. Yep. Meanwhile, they got these two absolutely fucking badass enemies on them. Yeah. Like, they, they were really, really tough enemies. Oh, big time. And... They, they were wailing on you. Your own fucking teammate was wailing on you, oh, mate. And then it, it, everyone died. And the best. Can thing... I just add one thing? Go. The most unceremonious death of the longest living character in that entire campaign. And you. what happened, mate? Yeah. Yeah. What Got happened? Bagged up into a sleeping bag and thrown off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get the unconscious didn't even get to say was that me yeah yeah, yeah that I, was me I forgot about that yeah because oh, you, you happened to be incapacitated at the time yep. Ryan put a sleeping bag over him so that he wouldn't move that's it and then kicked him off the edge just spooked me off the edge and then the worst thing was is <laughs> that, that, that Sean's character died <laughs> Sean's character died and then he took over Nick's pet which was a, a chicken oh yeah yeah Drek yep. and the chicken had this power that carried over from Lamentations where he could grow biceps and uh, arms and legs yeah yeah, yeah. And start wailing on people and the funniest thing was um, he took control of him and he's like right I'm going to jump over to that platform over there and start attacking and he just jumped straight into the pit died yeah, straight like away. a free so this chicken I mean they're not the best flyers anyway but come on it's got wings or arms so, shall I say yeah just went down the so in, in literally two turns Sean killed two characters yeah 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 man yeah. it was it was so fucking funny but the funny thing is Ryan the guy who started killing the rest of the party yeah. he ended up being the only Some one left survivor yeah and he, he went, he's just spent nine years walking through the tower find, trying to find the reality that was so specific it was one where his brother was still alive and everyone was still alive that was it yeah and also the beast that sent them to the Deadlands universe didn't exist in the first place from the Lamentations game yeah, yeah. and also a universe where he's uh, his his real self had just stepped out of that universe so he could step in and take his place. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, he, he comes yeah. in like all teary eyed. He spent like a year going through the, the Deadlands uh, Dark Tower universe <laughs> and he just goes, It's so good to see you guys. And they're all sitting around their war table yeah. from Lamentations, like, and they're just like, What the fuck are you talking You've about? He's been gone for two minutes. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you so old? Because he got aged as well. He looked at the Prim and aged into Ric Flair. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the Prim is like, it's like, it, it's the same thing as like, witnessing a monster in Cthulhu it's exactly. like the primordial yeah. chaos so he looked at it he rolled on the fear table and what he got was your character um, gets some sort of mark that, that gives them the ugly hindrance that was I think something yeah. like yeah, that yeah. and I just I, I just said well you aged 10 years mm-hmm. and so he was this wrestler guy and you were, you were saying like his, his sort of like he has these like saggy tits of an old man and like the grey hair and he <laughs> yeah. looks he doesn't wear a shirt this character so he, look, he literally looked like Ric Flair yeah Oh, right, we love you. That was good, man. It was a, it was a cracking ending. It was incredible, mate. I the whole campaign was credible. I didn't expect everyone to die. No, no, we've not had that before. We normally have at least two survivors, don't we, generally? Yeah, and um, it, like at the end. But the thing is, like, we've had TPKs before, but this was almost a TPK, and it was 
right at the end, mm, which was mm. kind of sad. But I think the that monsters that I built, yeah, and I, I think it was fitting. And I think yeah. the monsters that I built for the end, like the the Crimson King, who was basically a formless spawn from Cthulhu. Yeah. By the way. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the the Man in Black, they were supposed to be powerful, so I made them challenging. Yeah. The difference is, is like when we played Solomon Kane, or at the end of that, you felt you fought like a, a version of Kane that was like. He'd been given all these powers. Oh my god, he had the gun tornado, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but the, the difference between that and and this was that at the end of Solomon Kane, your character was a legendary. Yeah. And in Deadlands, you guys were sort of four, all right. four above season. Like, yeah, you're right. You know, <laughs> you're you've right. done an adventure or two. <laughs> yeah, that was fun as shit, man. Yeah. I, I had, it was uh, incredible. I'll tell you what, you must, you must write it at some point just as a fan homebrew it was so fun yeah I might, I might do fans that fans would love it it's very very good and what what Harrison did which I thought was cracking and obviously if it, all the listeners out there if you are thinking about it the way it works perfectly is if you've had a lot of our existing campaigns that you've played with your friends over the years and you've had quite a few reoccurring characters or staples that always pop up every time for a, you know for a laugh and that um, mash them all up in a, D, in a Dark Tower campaign because you can use anything from any of your old campaigns and throw them all in and it's brilliant it, it, this was my my easiest campaign to get, really? to, to get a good reaction from people oh, I'll put it that way like yeah. I work really hard on like called encounters yeah, yeah. called characters things like this but in this I was just like you, you, you get to this town and you see and you see a man with gold teeth and everyone was like oh, oh because it's yeah. one of the characters from Fallout yeah. or you walk around the corner you hear hello and everyone's like hey yeah. <laughs> it was so that good. was good man it was so good thank you it was brilliant that's alright it was a fucking fun game mm-hmm. um, in addition to that uh, I played Accursed recently oh yeah let me know so this is like a game where you play Savage Worlds yeah it's a Savage Worlds setting yep. and you, you kind of play like universal monster movie archetypes so we uh, we what, had you mean the monsters from the kind of so I was a golem which is like a Frankenstein's yeah. monster. We could play like a wolfman. You could play a wolfman. We did actually. I think we had a werewolf on the team. Mm. We had a mummy on the team, <laughs> of course, mummy uh, who smoked weed, which was <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, nice. but yeah, that was that was fun. As you need a paper, like, just tears a strand. Off it got really <laughs> stupid real quick because we did a social <laughs> conflict, which is like it's kind of like a, a, a rule in Savage Worlds where it, it elongates like a social role. It's like a big argument or debate isn't it yeah but it with could be mechanics. used really well yeah. for courtroom scenes exactly for yeah um and in this particular one we were trying to coax uh there was a girl we went to this village right and everything was fucked and there was nobody around but there was this little girl hiding in a cupboard and she was uh, there was a pile of salt next to her which is like you know it wards off demons and yep. shit and there was these werewolves about and shit so we were trying to coax her out um find out what she knew and um, it was pretty funny because the, it, when you get a crit fail, you take two successes away from the party. And this, <laughs> this guy, Corey, he was a snake man and he could turn into, into a snake. And uh, what happened is, is that he was trying to impress this girl. Corey the snake? Uh, no, no, Corey's his real name. Oh, right. right. Okay. His real name was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say, Corey's slang for penis over here. Yeah, so we all called him like Doug or something. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Doug but, the snake. But yeah, he, he crit failed during the social encounter, took away two successes and all of us started narrating what happened just, like just having a laugh and we said that he slipped on a bottle of Windex and knocked it over and of course Windex doesn't exist in this universe it's fantasy Windex man. Th- that's what we called it and <laughs> of course. it was just water and vinegar <laughs> in, in a bottle you have a little bit of enchantment on it and yeah and my character started crying about the Windex and then we, we started <laughs> it, was, it was really funny because we had to like go and fo- go to this church and find out what happened but none of us actually wanted to except for Corey's character and he started going towards the church and he, he initiated a chase scene and th- in that he, he it was like you, you, you put a uh, club down from a card and it's like rocky terrain and Eric ruled it that it who was GMing Eric ruled it that it was a Windex salesman with his cart going through the road and Corey fucking <laughs> slams into it it explodes <laughs> and there's fucking wood everywhere but the best thing was is we, we found where the werewolves were and we got up to them and started fighting fighting them and uh, one of them who was like this big giant fucking thing that could phase and shift into different parts of the map um, uh, he came up behind me rolled a 19 for his stealth oh. and then so I rolled a 4 fucking, fucking in your pocket you yeah that was realize. what it was yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's right up behind you and yeah. he, he attacks me gives me 3 wounds and Ooh. my character just went nope and then and then ran back Seen to our enough. base. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> he noped the fuck out. <laughs> well, yeah. I was playing this big fucking golem dude, and then nope. suddenly I just went nope, and I <laughs> ran away. <laughs> the best thing was is that everyone else died, and I was like, 
it, it, like everyone was calling me a coward and things yeah, like this. I was like, enough. look, who's still alive? Yeah, all right. True. Who's talking? Because huh? <laughs> <laughs> everyone died, and then um, the ending sort of happened where I was I was sitting back in our vase with a cup of tea, my feet up, and I was like, hmm, I wonder where they are. I hope they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good game. Oh yeah, it was fun. it was fun as hell, man. Like I, I think I think you would like it a lot because yeah, it sounds if fun. you get to play like literally literal monsters. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd and like it's that. fun because my guy was a golem investigator. So imagine Frankenstein with a suit and glasses on and who takes oh, notes. Mate. Like, I play a stench cow from the last episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Geelands, um, we've been playing. Uh, I, I don't like to talk about this on the show, but right. we've been playing D and D. It happened. Yeah, <laughs> it finally we, happened. I started a fifth edition game, and obviously, as you all know, I've, I'm not that fond. <laughs> I haven't been that that like uh, positive about D and D in the past. No, and I've never played it. So. But the thing is, is that the thing D and D does well is is monsters. Oh no, did and we just become a D and D podcast? Oh no, shit! Oh, it shit. happened. Shit. But um, yeah, they do, they're monsters. They have such great descriptions and and uh, and you know. It's nice. Like, it looks good. Let's be honest. Yeah. it looks nice. Yeah, it does. And and their habitats, what the monsters do. Yeah. So I, I wanted to do a monster hunting type game, and this just seemed perfect. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We currently, um, yeah. They're, basically, what happened is, is the party they uh, um got given a disused zoo. Uh, for monsters well lo- loaned one while we yes. prove worthiness yeah so yeah. they've got a year to a make contract. it a success and yep. if they do they get to keep it bear in mind the zoo was empty there was <laughs> oh god the skeletons <laughs> there was one the one attraction and I say that with the loosest possible terms but what it was was it was two goblins that just died in an enclosure years ago fighting each other and become skeletons I guess or humans whatever they were and, no it was uh, goblins no it was goblins uh, and that was it that's all we had to start so with. what they did is they went out on a mission to go and capture their first monster which, yeah. which happened to be kobolds yeah, basically right. they woke up <clears throat> found that everyone's shoes had gone missing <laughs> and, and <laughs> after a bit of investigative gameplay they found out it was kobolds yep. but to try and make money in the meantime they put a sign over the Fandolin Zoo sign the show must go on yeah and they called it Bone World <laughs> and, and so they got this like skeleton enclosure that's their one interaction <laughs> and it's a dead fucking monster yep. and the one staff member we've got that's not currently in the um Searching party is our head of HR, who is also now our um, ticket tout. Who they hired well. specifically because she knows nothing about HR <laughs> and probably would do stuff in, in it like like to help the company rather than help. Yep. She was like, "Oh yeah, I love signing stuff." Is that like, oh, very good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So essentially, the world is. I'm using um, parts of the Acquisitions Incorporated yeah. setting book, <clears throat> which is. It's basically D and D by way of the office, yeah. And it's it's like where bureaucracy and red tape and things like this have taken over. And as a result, in addition to creating your normal D and D characters, you have to pick a um, a, a co- company Career. position. Position, that's it. Yeah. And that ranks up every like five levels. Yeah. Um. So to give a good example, we've got somebody that is the law master, and they're in charge of <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Keith Wegman. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. you might as well tell about the names. You got to tell yeah, because we names. made sure everyone had to have an, a real world name. The caveat be, was yeah, and be kind of mundane characters because yeah. it's the office, you know. <laughs> and I'll get into the characters in a sec, but <laughs> the company position at Keith Wegman, he's the law master, and so he's like the the he, he keeps all the knowledge of yep. the company, yep. and as a result, he gets a, a, a an item at level one called the Jar of Whispers, and it's basically a recording device. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Ryan, who is the I forget what his position is called, but it oh, is, he's, the, he's the documenter. Documenter. <laughs> See, it's a pretty funny name. Yeah. But what is he's in charge of all the legal stuff because yeah. before he, he he came to the zoo, he was a uh, cowboy builder. He used to scam people, and he was only the rich, only the rich. Yeah. yeah. And he was very very good at making a dodgy contract. He's never been caught. Yeah. yeah. Never been caught so far. That what's cool about that is is that he gets um, he can understand legalese as yep. as an actual language, and he gets uh, a advantage on checks to uh, understand any codes or ciphers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. he can also he also gets advantage for forging documents. Oh, mate! And, and uh, that came in bloody handy. Uh, well, that's the funny thing because you think, what? Oh, yeah, like you're ever going to use that in a D and D game? You'll be surprised. Um, actually, he, I think he knocked up three contracts within the first episode. And the funniest one was when we was um, interviewing for the HR position, and. Uh, He's like, hold on a minute, I can knock a contract up that will bind her so tight she'll never be able to leave the company. <laughs> it was it was good, man. It, the way he does the voice is yeah. perfect. Yeah. And he's like, hang on, let's. 
I got a contract for that. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And um, sure every time you... they get it, they're like, "What's that tiny block of print at the bottom?" They're like, "I don't worry about it." Because they, they don't have the legalese proficiency, <laughs> so it, it's really fucking funny. Fucking hilarious. But the 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 you there's one person that has to be kind of the it's called the decisionist, and they're yeah. like the company head kind yeah. of thing, and yeah. they make all the decisions. Mm-hmm. And what it is is they get a ballot box at level oh, one, yeah, and they can they can pull that out at any time to cast a vote on anything. But they get two votes. They get two votes because yeah. they're the decision. Which is so, really cool, and that got come out twice as well. It did, like literally. <laughs> they they went into the Cobalt Caves, going through this dungeon, and then they were like, "Should we go right or left?" And Sean's like, "Right, I get the ballot get box, the box out." out. <laughs> yeah, it's so good because it's like a, a, a mundane, like sort of reflection of the real world in D and D. Yeah. Um. What 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 we did is we had everyone had to be like really normal names and normal type people. So Sean's this very. He's based on Stanley from The Office. Yeah. And they went to the pub and he spent the whole time in the uh, in the loose doing a crossword doing a puzzle. crossword, yeah. And his name is... Fuck, what is it? Stanley. Um, it, it, it's pronounced... He done it, It's hard to pronounce on purpose. It's not that hard to pronounce. Oh, it's, it's, it's Hodgson. Hodgson. So Stanley Hodgson. Everyone gets it wrong, though. And then we've got... Um, what's your one? Uh, my guy's name is David Dishington. <laughs> David Dishington is so good. Because we saw... Well, you saw it on a post on yeah, Facebook. And we're yeah. like, that's my character that's name. That's the best name I've ever seen. We've got David Keith Dishington. Wegman, which is James. And Ryan. Ryan's character is Grant... Shaftesbury Grant Shaftesbury the best one and the, the best the one, best is, one. Is, is there's, he's the occultant of the company so he's in charge of all of the occult occult dealings and also the accounting accounting as well yeah and um, he is a uh, gnome warlock called Norman Fiend Norman Fiend Fiend <laughs> <laughs> and he talks like this hello <laughs> and he, he was saying at the beginning that he gets to pick a f- a fiend to, to, to be his like his god right and he was like I'll, I'll, um, I'll pick it next game because I've got my book at home and I've got to pick a fiend and we were like a fiend a should, that's, that's, a, what, that's what he should be right a, yeah. Alan Fiend and then he just picked it for his character so he's yeah he's Norman Fiend he's, yeah. which is the, and he's like realistically he's like the only real bad guy on the team yeah he is actually Cause yeah because he, he's he does he deals in necromancy and yeah. shit and he was obsessed with those skeletons oh man he was obsessed, but it was funny we was in the when we was in the pub he was uh, do you remember all he was doing was playing D&D in the corner and doing mage hand to wind people up <laughs> yeah because James's character he's playing a paladin that used to be a criminal and he's he's like seen the betterment of his ways yeah. and um, he was going around the pub trying to preach the good word of his god and um, every time he went up to someone and pair. started whispering in their ear mm. fucking the, the warlock Norman Fiend he started um, he started rustling people's hair touching their asses with mage hand and they'd turn around and obviously see Keith Wegman there and he'd be like so have you heard the good word of Pan and they're like don't touch me get away from me oh the best one was is that so we had uh, yeah Ryan's character the builder who's like um, chatting up women in there and stuff and at one point he had two women either side and a little female gnome sitting in his lap and then the fiends made him drop a drink all over the gnome in yeah, his and lap he, he, he was, his hand was just slowly turning and he was like no no <laughs> yeah it was a, it was a, a gnome like a gnome slag gnome but, slag yeah. <laughs> yeah it was hilarious Fucking, I, I'm enjoying it it's a lot it's so man. much fun mate the, the thing is the character creation is really fucking involving and I haven't been in a game like that in a while I've like for a long time yeah it's like GURPS Pathfinder that type of thing like it, yeah. ta- it takes a good hour to do oh yeah definitely and you need like material you can't I would say you need at least two books <laughs> if you've got few people yeah but I, I printed one off yeah luckily legally actually I don't know if it is legal we but- borrowed one onto paper <laughs> that's exactly what it is <laughs> and then obviously we had two player handbooks you own the copy so it's fine I'm not sure I don't know what illegal look it doesn't matter we'll get Dave no we'll get Grant to write up a contract Every, everything was shredded yeah it was it was shredded immediately after but yeah you, you, we had a couple of books floating around and the character creation you end up with uh, like something close to like a seasoned character in Savage Worlds God, where you, yeah. have, you have all these edges like and abilities that you can items. do items but ton of items you start you do, with. You get shitloads, man. Yeah, but, which did actually that was one of the few things that actually sped the process up a little bit because rather than sitting there looking at a load of mundane items, you just get like an adventurous pack that's got everything in it. It's great. I love the the idea. That of was packs. a good idea. It's perfect. Yeah, very good idea. But you know what? Um, it, it was fine, and I think you end up with cool characters at the end of it. But yeah, it just takes w- way too long, and I don't mind it. But the thing is, as well, the characters are more survivable. So having a sort of um, long character creation is perfectly fine. I mean, it took us an hour to do. Yeah, Fine. Five fucking characters. Yeah, exactly. It was, and good. that was with like us discussing possibilities. Oh, God, Nobody's ever done stuff. it before. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it was fine. Yeah, it was good. Um, I wanted to talk about tough guys. Woo! 
because me and Nick uh, worked on a book called Tough Guys along with Owen Lean, and yeah. it is a it's a London supplement for the gangster game Wise Guys, That's right? Which is out now, yes, and in print form. And I've ordered my copy. It's on its fucking way. It looks fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wise Guys, like I'm not just saying this because we worked on the, the expansion, nah. but it is so good. We play tested it, and it's 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 the best gangster setting ever made. Or, uh, best gangster system. Sorry, we done it. Sorry, <laughs> we did it. Eric did it, and we well, we added. Did. Our London on it. Yeah, we added it. We, we infected it with a bit of London. We've done and, a London. Uh, we've done a London all over it. And uh, yeah, we hope you like it because uh, we're really proud of it, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And the first draft of that uh, has just been finished and it should be out um, fairly soon. And we're hoping by the end of the year. Oh, and but how would you be able to play it before that? How would you be able to play it before that is a very good That's question. Really, really because I'm going to be at Dragon Meat. Whoa. Which is on... <laughs> Whoa, slow down. <laughs> slow down there. This is on uh, the 30th of November. It's what a convention it? in London, and I'm going to be running Tough Guys, a, yeah. a, uh, a game called the Holloway Tea Rooms, where the hardest gangsters in London own a tea room as a front for selling drugs. Oh, yeah. Or stolen goods, whatever. It depends on if you're playing 18 rated or not. Well, that's it, yeah. But um, if, uh, if, po- if, uh, if, if gangsters isn't your fancy, I'll also be at Dragon Meat. Then why not come to my game and play a bunch of posh shows because I'll be running the Legend legendary whacked in the wicket uh, yeah. at Dragon Meat as well so. that's a fucking good adventure and we wrote it we did and yeah, we're proud of that as well yeah I'm, pr- I'm, I'm proud of it it's always fun because you get to pay these posh knobs who are forced to do an art heist and haven't got a clue what they're up to yeah and it's, it's really art. really fun so Trust get me. your ass down to Dragon Meat uh, there's still tickets isn't there I believe so. I think there's still tickets. Yeah, it's yeah. the end of the month. And um, uh, well, I went a couple of years ago and it was incredible. Harrison's been two years on the trot and he's always had a good time. Yeah, it's highly it's, enjoyable. It's Hammersmith. a really, really good uh, good convention. And man. the like, vendors sections double this year, I think. They've have actually you, had to have you double seen it. seen the fucking site? Like, so they've got much. everyone's Every, there. Everyone's there and their dog. Yeah, and their dog, yeah. So, uh, yeah, come along to that. Uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for what we've been slaying. Yep. So let's get on to the main subject. We're we going to talk about Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Yes. Yeah. Main. Subject. Magic. Main. Subject. Tokyo. Main. Subject. Savage Worlds is a cinematic, generic RPG focusing on quick, frenetic gameplay and cinematic play, and just recently, Pinnacle released Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, (laughs) giving the style of the game a fresh coat of paint and updating many of the rules. And we're not, we're going to try not to compare this too much to the previous edition because it'll get it'll get kind of boring but what we're going to do is review the game as a standalone product and maybe talk about the changes yeah definitely I mean, if you want to know about the old one go listen to episode 4 yeah that, we were so rusty on, on the actual game at the time we're so wrong I remember actually yeah don't <laughs> no don't listen to that one I, I, I really hate the early episodes just listen to this one forget that one ever happened yeah I hate the old stuff as well <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't listen to them man and it, the, the funny thing is I remember somebody it might have been our friend Eric who writes a lot for Savage Worlds He, I, he somebody said um, the, the guys in this podcast are really great they know most of the rules <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> it's like damning with faint praise, man. <laughs> that kind of comment. Yeah. Uh, compliment, you mean. Yeah. Have you got your no, copy not yet? yet? Because I, f- I fucked it up and uh, I need to speak to Pinnacle directly. And obviously there's a bit of a time delay, uh, time delay, time zone difference. And we both need to sort something out at the same time. So and, you, you yeah. have to get on to Skype at the same time. No, I have to go to the, what's it called? The pledge manager the, at the same time as they do so we can do the thing. And obviously with them oh. being in America, I need to figure it out when You've I Got, yeah, you've got to sort that out, man. Like in the morning to sort it out. This I know, I'm like... sorry, and I'm so sorry. I ballsed it all up, and uh, yeah, I will be. Yeah. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, well, you, yeah, because you, you, you kickstarted the the whole shebang, man. The whole the shebang, box, the, box. the fucking yeah, yeah, book. yeah. And yeah. and it's it's that must be gutting. But yeah, you've got you've got to like when you kickstart something, you've got to keep an eye on your emails. And oh, I'm, I'm no. terrible at it. The only reason so I knew bad. is because I saw everyone else talking about it. Oh, and I was like, I just forgot. Yeah, useless. Never mind. But yeah, I'll sort it out anyway. If I have to go over there, my Myself and pick it up. <laughs> you just turn up at the Savage World. Where's offices. my box? <laughs> yeah. Shane, where's my box? Shane, you little, you little run. Man. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, about about the game. The first page you see is some artwork. It's pretty nice. Then some more art, and then obviously the credits page is next. Oh, and of course. You read the credits page because, you know, it's the most interesting part and you see that Sean Patrick's self-admitted woman abuser Fanon is listed under the Advocates. Still? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's on the Adv- Advocates, Contributors and Playtesters page. And I'm like, what do you have to do to get, get properly kicked off? You to know? get banned? Yeah, you, I think you'd have to be actually Hitler. 
No, I think maybe Shane, Shane Hensley would still credit Hitler. Yeah. No, that's horrible. I don't know. I shouldn't say. I thought you were just like, yeah, we'll yeah, he would. Out. Let's get on with the game. <laughs> Making a character in Savage Worlds. Let's, let's talk about that. So first up, you need a concept that fits into the world you're playing. Savage Worlds can be used for just about any setting. So you might play a bounty hunter in a space setting or a wizard in a fantasy setting. Or in the case of a fantastic setting, low life. You might play a Twinkie with necromantic powers. <laughs> As you do. Exactly. <laughs> Once you have a concept, you pick your race. There's a bunch of sample ones in the book, but you can also make your own using a cool tool, which I'll get to later. Mm. So next, you determine your skills and attributes. Now, Savage Worlds has a kind of dice chain mechanic, where having a higher score and a skill or an attribute allows you to roll a bigger dice. Mm. So when building attributes, you start with a D4 in everything and get five points to increase them. One point equals one step up the chain. And the attributes are strength, agility, vigor, and spirit. And what? smarts. Sorry? And smarts. Oh, and smarts. You didn't say smarts. <laughs> I knew I forgot one. I knew I knew it. Yeah, so there's smarts as well. Just bear that in mind. That's fucking important. <laughs> Once you spend these points, you get points to spend in skills. And the main difference being that for most skills, you actually have to spend a point to get to a D4 in that skill. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you, you roll unskilled. So you get 12 points to spend in these skills and automatically start with a D4 in stealth, notice, athletics, and common knowledge. That's your first difference from the main. I was about to say, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not... Uh, yeah, because before you didn't have that. But anyway, yeah, yeah, the skills cool. in Savage Welds are quite broad and you're expected to kind of like trap your skills, imposing certain restrictions based on setting or character flavour. The, the shooting skill, for example, applies to bows, crossbows, bazookas, and water pistols. Mm. But it's anything that can be shot. But let's say, for example, most people will usually say, oh, my character, he's, he uses pistols, or he's a submachine gun guy. Mm. But, um, submachinist. He's a submachinist. <laughs> he's a tiny machinist. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're kind of expected to trap them. Because yeah. the, like the athletic skill, for example, that actually is used for climbing, throwing, it's broad, isn't it? running yeah. away. Yeah, that's but it. But you could, you, if, let's say, for example, you made an Olympian, you could, mm -hmm. say, you could take a D8 in athletics and say, well, this is because he throws really well, mm -hmm. because yeah, yeah, he's exactly. a hammer thrower yeah. or something. I don't know why you would make that character, but if you did... In that'd any case, fun. imagine that. That'd be weird. Or like, yeah, some like a, a a street vigilante that's got a hammer just starts whirling around, <laughs> just letting off down the street. Okay, that that'd would be, be all right. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be awesome. <laughs> He's like, right, give me a minute to to spin Let me just around, spin up, <laughs> get some momentum. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. In any case, from all of your stats and attributes, you then derive some other stats. For example, your parry is equal to two plus half your fighting, and your toughness is equal to two plus half your vigor score. Mm -hmm. So if you had a D6 in vigor it would be five. Um, parry and toughness are literally what they say, aren't they? One of them's for hitting at range, one of them's for... No, one no of sorry, one of them's for hitting, one of them's for... Like, resisting damage. That's it, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, it's pretty much that's pretty much what it is. And yep. we'll get into combat later, but next you pick some edges and hindrances. Ah. And edges are often, like, tropey abilities or unique game mechanics that apply to your character and give them cool stuff to do. Mm -hmm. For example, there's First Strike, where you can whack someone who's just come into melee range with you, or Charismatic, where you get a free reroll on Persuasion checks. That's cool. Or the, the, one of the best ones, Ace. This one is where a pilot or driver can ignore two points of penalties on their driving or pilot rolls and can spend bennies to soak damage on a vehicle. Wicked. Which is pretty awesome. And bennies are basically like reroll tokens, but they have other uses, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but yeah, m one of the main ones is that they can be used to soak wounds when mm. you take damage. Yep, so exactly. yeah, pretty awesome. Um, once you've picked edges, you also pick your hindrances. And these come in like many flavors and can be about the character's shortcomings or details of his dark past that haunt him or could even be niceties that your character practices that means certain situations will put him at risk because he's heroic or yeah. loyal or... Curious, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, hindrances come in major and minor varieties. Mm -hmm. And role-playing these well allows you to earn more bennies. A yeah. few examples of hindrances are pacifist, which can be major or minor. So a minor pacifist is a character who fights only when presented with no other choice. Whereas a major will never fight ever. No. <laughs> They're always... And I've, I've played in a game where somebody played a major pacifist. Yep. And uh, to be fair, I think when they leveled up, they, they bought off the hindrance. So you can do that. Like, you can, oh, say, yeah, of course you can, can get real yeah. one. I think I think you can anyway. I, at least I know a lot of people do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this guy played played a, a pacifist. Didn't didn't throw a single punch or do a single attack throughout the whole game. And then right at the end, where he bought it off, he went mental and stamped on the last boss. <laughs> uh, he also picked up a gun as well, which was pretty awesome. It's like everything had affected him so badly. Bad enough. He just snapped. <laughs> he yeah. snapped. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so an- another one, uh, another good hindrance is wanted. That's cool, yeah. This also has major and minor versions, or ugly, vengeful, slow, one eye, a beast. Yep. Picking these hindrances, provided you take enough, can also allow your character to gain perk points, mm-hmm. which can be spent on beefing up other parts of your character, like raising attributes, gaining another edge, or raising skills. And that's pretty much it for, mm. for building a character. Obviously, you have to buy gear too, but creating a character is so fucking easy. It is. And I think it's creating a, a kind of deep character because of the edges and hindrances. You always have like um, everyone feels kind of different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you get all these cool game mechanics attached to your character, yep. and you can do it in fifteen minutes. Exactly, it's and that's like, the beauty of it. Not quite the speed of an OSR game, but it's like really fucking. It's quick. Not far off, yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's a lot. It, you come out from character creation with a pretty well defined character, didn't you? Really, I'd say so. And and like I said, like. The, the cool thing is, is let's say you're playing a medieval setting or something, right? And two people build fighters. I can guarantee God down to you, they're never going to be the same. No, that's you right. Know what I yeah. Mean? yeah, exactly. They, they've always got these subtle differences to them, like just the edges they use, the mechanics that each character uses are going to be completely different. Let's yep. say somebody has first strike. They uh-huh. might be the kind of character that tries to bait people into attacking them yeah. so they can use the first strike. Or let's say, for example, somebody has the sweep edge. They might try to yeah. get them, also try to get themselves surrounded, but, they, but they'll just sweep on everyone. In fact, and those two go well really together. Really well together, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you might have somebody that's got like trademark weapon or improved trademark weapon yeah. where, where they, they got like a really fucking cool sword. And, and like there, there's so many different edges that that can change a character oh totally yeah I totally agree it would be good to play a game where you were all wizards all wizards in Savage Worlds because they'd all be different you know what I mean (laughs) yeah that would be fun I know a mate of mine this guy Darry he he, um, runs a game called Wizard Cops (laughs) and I guarantee you it would be fucking awesome in (laughs) Savage Worlds (laughs) Enchanted Handcuffs I might. <laughs> now that sounds fun. Yeah. Well, um, we should do that as our next buddy cop, play. like a buddy cop adventure. But you're all wizards. Yeah, they, like one of them's a wizard, one's a warlock, and they don't get on at first. They don't, but <laughs> but they have end. to work together. <laughs> <laughs> now earlier I mentioned a race creator, and yeah. this is this is both awesome and kind of funny in a way because for this you start with two points of positive racial abilities. So you pick from a big list of these things, which also all have like a point score. Mm. For example, aquatic will send send you back one point, okay. but the power of flight could send you back six points. Whoa! But uh oh, wait a minute. Why do why does it cost six points when you only get two to spend? It's yeah. because any abilities you get for your race above the original two points have to be counted with, and this is a bit racist. Negative racial abilities. Oh, Shane, what's up? <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> You little, oh, 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 you've done it now. Anyway, yeah, so you, you pick some negative ones to uh-huh. sort of um, counteract the, the points you've chosen over the two. Um, so negative r- racial abilities can include things like environmental weakness, can't speak, frail, being Portuguese. <laughs> one of those is fake. I'll leave, you, I'll leave you to guess which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it for racial... Can't speak. <laughs> Yeah, that is pretty much it for race creation. But I, I once made a vending machine robot race. Yeah. And to do that, I had to buy the construct ability, which costs eight points. And I ended up having to take dependence, electricity, and environmental weakness, hot climates. Because, you know, yeah, computers that's overheat. Like, that's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I got. I took some others as well. I can't remember what they were. but they And that offsetted the... Yeah, six points, points, right? Yeah, yeah, because um, I think construct you had to spend eight points on. Ah, so, right. Yeah, so that was that was where that all came from. Mm. But uh, yeah, I actually mm. played. I, I gave him a magic background, and we'll get into magic later. But I um, I sniped someone with a frozen chicken. That's so cool. Do you know what's weird? Because I've played a vending machine as well. Well, that's where I got team, the idea. Team machine. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> he was a team coffee machine in in last parsec. <laughs> But funnily enough, this was last Parsec as well. I think I just stole your idea. Ah, that's all right. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, we'll, get in, it. we'll get into magic later. But yeah. ne- but needless to say, I sniped the boss with the frozen chicken so from about I'm, 200 miles away. I got away. him. Yeah, got him. Nice. <laughs> Take that. Uh, so let's talk about some game mechanics. Yep. So using skills. To do anything in the game, you roll the dice associated with that skill. So like a D6, a D8. And you want to beat a four. Mm-hmm. Four is always the target number. You may have penalties to your roll, for example, a minus two for an unstable platform while shooting, but the aim is still to hit a four. Yeah. But if you hit the maximum number on any dice, you re-roll the dice, and that's called a bongo. That's, yep. Well, you re-roll the dice and add the result to, to the total. So that means that you, let's say you roll a six, you roll it again, you roll another six, you, you add them all together, 
And this can keep happening forever. Mate, it's one of the most exciting things in a, in a game. And I definitely think that that is what the fun part of Fast Furious fun, or maybe in the Furious part comes from. Because when you're on an exploding dice... Uh, throw and it just keeps going and going and going. The oh my god, the table the, just goes crazy. Table hype. Yeah, Everyone table starts hype. shouting. Oh, we, mate. We, we always play at our mate James's where we often play there, and uh, his daughter's sometimes asleep in the next room. We're like, yeah. and, and then she comes in and is like, Can you be quiet, please? You've been told off by like a nine year old. We're like, Sorry, because we're playing with our little, our little, our little men and dice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, oh, it's so much fun. And what about when you get a double explosion? You're like, You'll throw your roll two d6s, and they're both roll on six, and you're like, Oh my god, here we go. It, it is the, very it's much the fun. fucking best. And it is. Yeah, and it's it's called acing or exploding dice, or mm-hmm. we call it a bongo. A bongo, yeah. And uh, getting a score of four above the target number is called a raise. Yep. So that, that's that's <clears throat> the good thing. When it explodes, you can get a raise. And if you get more, that's that's two raises, three raises, and so yep. on. And the more raises you get, the better it, it, it's going to be. Absolutely. So it means you don't have to count the individual numbers. You just count success and then how many raises. Yeah, And then precisely. that's how you, you, you know somebody's done well. And not. if you do it on a fighting roll and you get a raise, you get bonus damage, which is even more fun. It's the fucking yeah. best. Yep. But all main characters, and these are called wild cards in Savage Worlds, get yep. to roll an extra D6 with any trait roll, mm-hmm. as Nick just pointed out. This is called a wild die. So whenever you roll, you always roll this two and pick the higher result. So uh, you, you're trying to climb something, you roll athletics, and then you roll that extra D6. Mm-hmm. Let's say you've got a D8, you roll a D8 and a D6. Yep. And it, I think in the book... It says that wild cards are those who have stepped up to do more than most. They dare, aspire, and risk to be a hero. And that's kind of why they get the wild die. But I think it's more that they're the main characters. Absolutely. They're more prone to success. So they get this extra little bonus dice. Exactly. And that's that goes for both sides of the, the screen. Uh, wild cards are player characters and also... Uh, um, like the big, the, the big, big bad guys, guys from... or just main characters. Exactly. Yeah. Which is which is pretty awesome. Uh, and and like if you roll a double one on both, that's a snake eyes. Ooh, that's a crit yeah. fail. Yeah. And you you can't re-roll that even nope. if you've got bennies. No. Nope. Um, rolling in combat, the target number might change. While shooting someone from a distance is still a target number of four. Hitting anything within melee range, even with a range weapon, means that you have to beat their parry yeah. to hit them. Then their toughness to damage them. So getting a score of four above this is also a raise. Mm-hmm. And, you know, special things happen. And if you get, like, a raise on a to-hit roll, you can roll a bonus D6 to your damage. Yep. And damage is the one area where you don't roll a wild die. But nonetheless, once you've hit to damage an enemy, you roll damage on your attack, be it a spell, a gun, or whatever. And you want to get four above their toughness. Doing this will wound them and shake them. Wild cards get four wounds before being incapacitated, and extras die after one wound. Yeah, they do, yeah. But if you beat their toughness, but don't get four above their toughness score, then they're just shaken. No wounds. And shaken is, like, usually an inability to act based on someone attacking you. It could be that the bullet gave you a flesh wound, but not enough to damage you. Or it could be that a baseball bat smacks into your armor, giving you a nasty shock, but yeah, you not got damaging shook. you. Got shook. You got yeah. shook up. You got shook up, and now now you can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Which sound, it sounds really dull, but it's not. Because no, you can no, unshake good. on your turn by either succeeding on a spirit roll or spending a Benny. Mm-hmm. So I guess now's a good time to talk about Bennies, right? Bennies, yep. Um, so Bennies, these are like tokens given out to players at the beginning of a session. And as the game goes on, these can be given for doing a cool action playing your hindrances or for a casual one shot or a comedy game doing something amusing or just a really nice little um, set piece of role play yeah yeah and that's that's honestly where I give most pennies yeah. out if yeah. people do good fucking role playing mm-hmm. uh, you, you can you have something to reward them yeah and exactly. I, I tell you like fucking some of the people I'm not going to name any names but some of the people that, that role play the weakest that we know uh-huh. you know I'm talking yeah. about they're, they're, when the bennies are flying for, for doing good role playing it, it really changes as a person. Ups their game, mate. Totally. Because the person that I'm referring to did a fucking good job throughout that campaign. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And it's funny, actually, because you yearn for this in other games when you're playing it. When someone does something epic and all you do is go, oh, have a Benny, and you're like, oh, no, we're not playing. We're not playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clouds. And <laughs> like when we played D&D the other day, and because you can't get multiple inspiration. Yeah, of I was like, I was, people were doing so much fucking and you cool can't shit. It. That's and the I, beauty of it. Do you know what? That might even be one of the biggest... Uh, good points about this whole system is the fact that as a GM you can reward your children you can reward them uh, in a way you see fit as yeah, well yeah, yeah, so yeah. the thing is you can sort of uh, 
you can sort of mould them, shape the game into a direction you want it to go. But that's very true. If you're da- if you, you know if you're, if you're dashing, I've got to stop talking Croydon. If you're dashing Benny's out and uh, <laughs> and uh, for for a certain thing, and as a player, you're like, oh, okay, the GM likes wisecracks, so let's yeah, drop some more wisecracks. The GM cracks. likes daring actions, yeah, or whatever. Exactly. You yeah. know, you, that's the cool thing. And then the players, they feel rewarded because they're like. Oh, cool! I got this. I got this little thing. But, yeah, appreciate it. But we actually haven't even spoke about what they do. What they so, do? What are they? These can be used to re-roll damage, re-roll a skill or attribute roll, unshake, get a new card in combat because initiative in Savage Worlds is done with cards. Yep. Or a Benny can be used for influencing the story. Uh huh. To do this, you give the GM the Benny, therefore spending it, and come up with a cool way to change the story. For example, you might flash back to a time where you bought a needed item. You may see a new detail in the environment that could help you out in combat or pushing an NPC into being more agreeable. But the GM has the final say. It's their discretion, right? You can't break the game with a Benny. Yeah, because you couldn't like go, I want to influence the story and the the bad (laughs) bad guy's head falls off. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, so so it's got to be something fitting with the game. But you you could even be like, remember that kid that we saved earlier he's going to turn up and yeah. he's been following us and it turns out he wants to help us in the combat yeah, so yeah, at yeah, yeah. a critical moment he jumps in it yeah. could be something like that yeah. you know it has to be something cool I, I, I'm i not the biggest fan of this mechanic but we used it in, in uh, Dark Tower and I, th- I think it was okay I think I, I think as a GM I sw- well seeing as you get the final say as a GM I think that it, it, in some situations it might be okay um, but I wouldn't use it a lot I wouldn't yeah I'd... I mean it is a hard and fast rule not a set I, actually I don't know actually now I'm saying it. I don't yeah. know if it's a setting rule, like an optional rule. Right. Um, but either way, um, I, I, I don't mind it. But the thing is, I would prefer it for more minor uses. Like I said, you know the uh, environmental detail, right? Mm. Let's say, for example, you went into a church, an uh-huh. old disused church, which was actually an encounter we played in Dark Tower. Um, and somebody said, oh, I look up and I see that the uh, the battered old chandelier is still there and they hand the GM a Benny because they want to use it to do a cool swinging yeah, kick or yeah, some yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, see, that's the type of use I like. But then it's I found that players, they don't really know where the line is and it's it's too ambiguous for me. I that's, just, the, that's the thing, isn't it? It's um, It should be almost... I'm sure we touched on something a little while ago when we was playing a game and it was some sort of an edge or benefit that they had where they could literally have like a... a uh, they, they say that they had something in their pocket whole time and it becomes real but it can only be little like a like a trinket or, oh, or a keepsake. Oh god, I can't remember. It, oh no, I'll tell you what it was. It was when we did the uh we did so we did some interludes and then the little yes. bullet became real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little things because, like that, it's fun. Yeah, and, and James, he did an interlude, and he, he basically talked about how he became a gunslinger, yeah. and that this demon gave him a bullet, and he's always worn it around his neck, and things like this. And I, I just went, okay, cool, yeah, you you now have this bullet. Put you've, it on you've, your this, you've chosen yeah. to tell people about it now. I mean, we'll talk about interludes in a bit, but yeah, that that would be a kind of cool year. That's okay. Something yeah. minor, but minor like I said, stuff. I don't know where the line is, and it's, yeah, uh, that's the, the players issue, don't either, it? and it's sort of like, I don't know, that's a bit lame, but other than that, Benny's just re-roll anything, and that's what they're cool for and and that's why players like them because they give you more of a chance to succeed yeah exactly they're physically they're anything um generally people use uh, casino chips uh but you can use absolutely anything um you know depending on what you're playing i've seen um like you know weird war games where they've used bullets and stuff and we've used old coin and yeah corks you can use anything i like it when they're when they're they're setting appropriate yeah exactly um but yeah, that's that's basically it for Benny's. But we've spoken about combat a little bit, you know, shaking someone, damaging someone. But I want to go back to combat for a second because I want to talk about tests. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So you see, Savage Worlds is, like, renowned for allowing non-combat characters to have a fighting chance in combat. You know, not only because, like, even shitty improvised weapons have the chance to damage someone massively yeah, with a yeah. lucky roll. Yep. But also because of tests and, and, and certain edges and things. Like, a test isn't an attempt to make something more difficult for your enemies. The classic example is throwing sand into an enemy's eyes or yelling out an insult. And to do this, you simply do an opposed role. Your appropriate skill versus an appropriate attribute from the defender. So, for the insult example, you roll taunt, they roll spirit to defend. Yep. If you win, you can choose to make the defender distracted or vulnerable, meaning they're worse at doing shit or easier to hit, respectively. Exactly, yep. And if you get a raise on this, the defender is going to be one of those conditions still, but is also shaken. Ooh. Now, the cool thing about this is if a character is already shaken, all you need to do to damage them is just hit their toughness. You don't need to get a raise on it. So by running around the battlefield and making your mum jokes, you can actually give your teammates a much easier time. Yeah. And that's what's fucking cool. So the yeah. so the pacifist hindrance, right? You look at that and go, 
That sounds fucking boring. No, I guarantee you it isn't. We had we had a, a pacifist character in our last game, and he would. Oh he, my he god! He just made things easier for everyone else. Like he had this ability called Rebel Yell, and mm-hmm. I, I it's actually in Savage Worlds Adventure Edition now, but I forget what it's called. And he can do a taunt roll on a on a large area, That's so it. he can yell out an insult to a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there was there was a scene where he there was this little kid gangster, <laughs> and um, he Jimmy the Sandal, Jimmy the Sandal, and he went up to him, uh, insult. Well, he didn't insult him. He went up to him, and his his taunt role was that he pretended to have a sword on him. <laughs> yeah, and he like he like he like kind of m- ch- like moved his body to a position where it looked like he was about to p- draw, draw a sword. A sword. <laughs> yeah, and then um, what happened is is he rolled so well that Jimmy the sh- Sandal became vulnerable and also shaken. Got shook. So yeah. then and then at that point, Long Iron uh, James's character bursts out from cover and just fires out with two shots and kills him because <laughs> yeah. he was easier to hit. Yeah, he was both vulnerable and shaken. Yeah, he's cracking. And it was the first time I've seen the new version of this come into play, and I think it's a great kind of um, inv- advancement from the old stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, we were saying, like, there, there was a, a really stupid thing that in Punted in the Bonds that I allowed to happen, where um, fucking my brother was hiding in the ceiling tiles of a post office, yeah. and the police were searching for him, and he used a swimming roll to dive onto one of them. <laughs> And um, you know, in in this new version, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, that would be a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he could land on them, suddenly make them vulnerable and shake. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It would work, man. It would be it's, fucking it's, awesome. It's wicked. Yeah. Yeah. So you used it to dive, which was kind of stupid, but, but it was uh, funny. Yeah. Now combat also has loads and loads and loads of options. There's something called a wild attack where you go mental and mm-hmm. gain a bonus at, in attacks, but also becoming vulnerable as you do it. You can aim, gang up, and get bonuses. Use improvised weapons. Do multi attacks at a penalty. Uh huh. But Let's move on to magic because the options for combat are like so numerous. Yeah, but they're all uh, what are they? They're all kind of like tactical things you can do it within a fight to kind of give you an advantage. And a lot of it kind of makes sense. It's like yeah, it's you know cold. taking cover, doing a double tap on your gun, yeah, um, taking a round to aim, get, or, or yeah, taking a round to aim, shot, cold shot, wild attack, and all of it kind of works fluidly in the system it's yeah. not like it's it's very easy to get because it, it all uses the same central mechanic and half the time it's either you get a you get a bonus or a penalty yeah something like that yeah. yeah you know it's good but they work and it's great and it gives you a little bit more diversity when you're looking at combat rules rather than yeah I hit him with my broadsword but the good yeah my broadsword with my broadsword but the good thing about um, magic in Savage Worlds is that they've kind of got options as well yep yeah. like in in this like magic is called uh, called powers and the resource for using them is called power points mm-hmm. this is because magic or powers come under many many styles for example gifted which can be a divine gift or superpowers and with this you start with one power and 15 power points yeah. or there's miracles where you're a cleric type magic mm-hmm. user <laughs> you're a cleric type magic you. you start with three powers and have 10 power points or one of the better ones weird science yeah of course is another way your powers in in air quotes are are actually scientific gadgets yeah so the powers are deliberately vague and you're expected to trap them for example the most popular damage spell is bolt and i've seen this being used with weird science as a cutlery launcher (laughs) and i know somebody's done it with a taco gun (laughs) where they played a mexican wizard oh wicked but if used in miracles it could resemble like a holy hammer dropping on somebody's head or some shit yep but you also have things like Barrier, allowing you to create a magic wall, or Blast, an area of effect spell. Mm-hmm. There's Confusion, Detect Arcana, Disguise, Elemental Manipulation, Entangle, Healing. But the cool thing about all these powers is they can be modded, which is what I was saying, you know, that people get, that magic users get so many options yeah. as well. So many of the spells have like stuff modded in already. For example, Bolt, the simplest one, it usually does 2d6 damage or 3d6 with a raise and costs one power point. But if you add an extra two power points, chuck them in there, yep. we're talking 3d6 damage oh, ho, ho, ho. and 4d6 with a rage. Lovely. With a rage. With a rage. With a rager. <laughs> in addition to the spell's own mods, you can add a number of generic ones by spending more power points, like armor piercing, heavy weapons, so you can damage tanks That's and really shit, cool. which is fucking awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> and the aircraft spells. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you can extend the duration slash range, right? Yeah. And this is what I was talking about with my uh, with my vending machine character. What I did is I um, added extra damage, added extra range. Yeah. And I, I and the spell popped off so hard that this chicken came out, boom, and it just flew across the fucking map like it was this gigantic map. And the enemy and the enemy like was behind cover yeah. as well. And I still fucking hit her directly in the head, killed her in oh, one hit. Yeah. She she came out like trash talking, like you like she's getting a gun ready behind the cover. And and she's like, you fuckers are dead. And I'm just like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, fucking, it was so, <laughs> so good, man. Good. 
but this whole thing gives magic users like flexibility and yeah. options during combat and I, I love it like you played a magic user in Dark Tower and yeah, you, you had a couple of spells that could be modded and things like this did you you, you enjoy playing a magic user oh, I love it magic? yeah I didn't use I mean I didn't play magic for a hell of a long time and then now I can't stop playing magic users and Savage Worlds it's fun I like that you can uh, choose how powerful really you want the spell to be now depending on how many power points you spend and you know you can like you said trap them however the hell you like so it's a bolt you know in brackets but what you how that manifests in your game is all completely up to you which is really really cool well because I guess the, the the kind of the, the problem with uh, magic in the previous edition and I know we said we wouldn't compare them too much is, yeah. that, is that the spells they did this one thing yeah. and as your character leveled up they still did this one thing yeah that's right but now yeah. what you could do is you, there's an edge called I think more power points mm-hmm. yeah. and so you could get you could level up keep taking more power points then every time you you do a spell uh-huh. you can mod it to fuck yeah. spend like 10 power points and you're doing you're doing sniper frozen chickens all day long <laughs> it's brilliant with extra damage it's and fun that yeah that's what I think is cool I, I like I like the magic a lot like I've, I've played magic users I played it in uh, our Warhammer campaign yeah of course yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, had mate. The, I, I think it was the burst spell right yeah. and they, we were fighting on top of this on top of this wall like on a church the Skaven had just come in and they started they, they were in, invading there was a bunch of Skaven on the, on the high wall outside the church and also some of our soldiers. Oh, that's right. And I did yeah. a blast and I was just like... And, and the DM was like, you know that your friendlies are there? And I was like... Yeah, I think yeah. they'll survive. Yeah, they'll, they'll be all right. And, be all right. Then, and then I just blasted them. Everyone flew off the fucking roof. Yeah, blood died. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I, fortunately, I was on my own, so I never told any of the other characters. Oh right, yeah. But it's yeah, you're right. I mean, if you're if you're a, if you're a little bit adventurous then by all means use the magic because you've got loads to play with well, and uh, because it's not a class based role playing game yeah like your character he had fighting and magic he did yeah he's an right. old fucker yeah, as well. old, old, old bloody old cod- codger yeah but yeah you can so you can sort of multi-class in a way that feels kind of natural yeah. and fits the fucking game it's fun awesome. there's a lot to work with now, as for rules we didn't cover, there's like really great chase rules, yeah. mass battles. Mass social... battles is amazing. Sorry, that, just it, want to add that. It really is fucking awesome. So good. And we talked about social conflict earlier. Yeah. There's, there's vehicle combat rules as well. Yeah, there is. They yeah. all mostly follow the same mechanics, but applied to different types of encounter, which makes these mini game type scenarios really easy to pick up. And fun. They, they're, 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 a little, they're a little break from your kind of normal, you know, combat, discussion, role play kind of night. Throw in a few of these extra little mini games if you like yeah and they really mix it up a little bit yeah yeah fun. because the the mass battle that we did like it was oh, the first so one good. that you guys have ever played yeah and fucking like you you kind of get to describe your actions over a two hour period and yeah and then you've got the chases where you're racing over cards that, that mean different terrain and it's really like fun and especially the mass with the mass battle uh just to touch it quickly again the it's cool because you get like a you get like a stack of bennies or, or you know casino chips and they sort like a representation of how well you're doing compared to your opponent and that sits in front of everybody so you can see it and it's almost like a live barometer moving as you're playing it's it is really awesome. cool because you get like you get like bonuses depending on how how much your army out- outweighs yeah. theirs and, th- and and that that's represented by the chips and like like I said they they all kind of follow the the just the main game's yeah. mechanics as well so that's my favorite new thing at the moment I've tried so far it's kind of similar to the old one to be fair yeah but okay fair play the, the thing about it is is that when you when you roll dice um in in the mass battle you're still just going okay so let's say for example in that particular battle James he was uh on on a roof sniping oh. people yep. throughout the throughout the battle well for the first 2 hours and he all he did was roll shooting so uh-huh. you, and, and it's yeah. that simple yeah. and that's what makes them so fucking good it it was really good. It all follows the same fucking thing. That's right. But the one that doesn't, the one sort of sub mechanic thing uh, that doesn't really follow that is interludes. Yeah, um, yeah. You don't really roll. You just an interlude is a chance to to, to uh, give a p- bit of backstory to your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in adventure edition, the cool thing is is that you can also use it for downtime events. Pass some so time, exactly. Let's say, for yeah. example, everyone's sitting around the fire. You could be off gathering or mm-hmm. something like this, mm-hmm. which is and and it can be used for that or. Um, you can talk about things in your past and typically what it is is like for example in wise guys or tough guys you get the chance to maybe give, give an interview when you're driving somewhere exactly. pop fiction style exactly you, you, might yeah. talking about, you might start talking about like a Royale with cheese or something <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, the metric system yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I love interludes, man. We talked about them a lot on previous podcasts, but they are a really, really great way uh, that seems natural to give 
characters a chance to share their backstory absolutely and make up details about it yeah precisely and also um you know if you've got i don't know maybe you've got some characters that are some players that are a little bit more um not so you know up to up to up to speed with the role playing aspects it's a good little time for them to kind of um have an opportunity to flesh out their character even more you know and uh, yeah i think they're cracking i think they're cracking little talk if they if the character is kind of a bit weak and a bit bland yeah then suddenly they have to they're forced to come up with details exactly it becomes a lot better like like with long iron when he shared that story about how a demon gave him a bullet at that point there there was a sort of a darker edge to his character yeah from the from literally the second after we finished that interlude section of that night everyone looked at long iron a little bit differently because it's like we know a little bit more about your past it's actually a bit darker than we thought he gave up religion in order to, uh, because he believed in the demon, you know. It yeah, yeah cool, gave man. him a bullet. Yeah, exactly. And it was really good. So, yeah, please, 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 GMs, uh, if you haven't used the interludes yet, use them. They're great. And they really are. They don't have to be these epic, epic stories. Some of them could be quite short, quite sweet. But as long as they give a little bit more depth or a new angle to a character, then they've, they've, they've done the job. Yeah, I mean, it gives you a chance to role play. So, yeah, yeah. I, th- I, think, I think they're awesome. They so, are, yeah. yeah use really them. good. But before we close this review... Um, let's do a quick mention about gear. Yeah. So this being an open system, the game sort of gives you example equipment from medieval, modern, and futuristic eras. These are basically the standard stuff you'd expect to find, which is perfectly reasonable, and they're all statted in an easy-to-read manner. Yeah. Guns give distances at which your shooting will incur penalties mm-hmm. for being too far away. All weapons are given special notes where applicable, and, of course, rate of fire, damage, all that junk is there. Yeah. Overall, I think it's a pretty good gear section um, with like all types of armor and weaponry, and it gives examples of the most common stuff. So for an open game, I think it's quite good, like... It, it just has all of the medieval items you'd expect to find. Yeah. Laser pistols, phaser pistols, all of this there shit. There you go. And the thing is, if it's not... Yeah, because, because I worry about some sometimes people go, oh, the item's not in the book, so it must not exist in the game. It's like, no, dude, come on, they're generic. They're general. So if, you know, if the thing... They're that guidelines. You, exactly. So if yeah. you've got a special pistol, but you can't find it in there, you know, use pistol. It's fine. But and then put, give trademark weapon. There you go. Exactly. There you go. And you yeah. can... You, you, like, the game... T- talks about trappings a lot. Trappings. It's all about the trappings. And yeah. it's a good it's a good time to bring that up really because like like Nick says, you you can trap the the in, the trademark weapon. So you've got a really fucking special pistol that mm-hmm. does something different than everyone else's doesn't. Yeah. That's how it fucking works. But the thing about it is is that I, I, when people talk about trappings and this being the best thing since sliced bread in Savage Worlds, it is right because in the, when you've got a bolt spell don't say it's a bolt spell say you've got your fireball yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. and for example uh, we had a monk in the game that had chi chi blast and yeah. he called it the dragon flame that's it dragon flame yeah um, and and I like that but the thing is is that I've been doing that for my entire role playing life in yeah, all yeah, games yeah, yeah, so I don't get what the fucking big to deal is man like, but it's for people that I don't know I don't, know, you don't have much imagination, imagination. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah now have, they're, they're like oh you can do this <laughs> you could do it in any fucking yeah. game you know but, you can just do that anyway if you want That's I mean the that was my thing playing. when I first started fucking playing D&D one of the first things that the GM said to me was um, by the way you can name your spells whatever you want and they can look however you want but the mechanics they're, they're there and I was, uh, I was just like alright I mean, it's it, like I don't see why that's that's a big deal. It, it is good, like it is good, and it's and, and Savage Worlds is written with that in mind. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, is, bless is it, there's what... some people out there that just don't get that. Oh, yeah. then, and there's also there's people that are like not they don't want to break the rules, but they're very much like you know if they get a, uh, if they buy a product they will read the guide inside out and do it you know verbatim. But it's like you know don't worry, don't yeah, worry about that. I, so I much. guess there's certain people that like what you use trappings in DCC. That's that's not rules as written. Sacrilege. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Shut up. Fuck you. It's a game, mate. <laughs> Go have fun. Go, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, um, that's that's pretty much it for the for the game. Um, well, let's have a talk about presentation I actually don't even have my book out but I'll pass it to you and we'll here we go let's see what Nick could have got <laughs> <laughs> if he had sorted his fucking life out there you go brother look at this well I mean I've got to say they've knocked it out of the park with the box I like I, I like the cover I don't know but the more the more I look at it, the more goofy it becomes because it's a woman sort of not looking at the big monster that's looking at her. She's do- she? sort of looking at. I think she's sort of dodging round the yeti, but it's, it's got. I was oh, like, it's a yeti. I thought it was like a, a, a disgruntled demon. Yeah, I don't know. I man. guess so. It's just like crouched. Like it's it's a fucking good piece of art, and the the artwork throughout is pretty great. The presentation is is amazing. Yeah. And if there's any game that it's needed a fresh coat of paint, it was this one. Oh it, god. Because yes. the last book, right? It was a tenor. But when you say to someone, we're playing this, and you show it to them, it's embarrassing. Like, it's that <laughs> fucking bad. Like, every single piece of art has a different art style. style and the, no, there's no continuity whatsoever. The writing, oh, oh, she's back. 
She's back, yeah. <laughs> the writing was pretty bad as well, and and like so so much of it was kind of unclear. And they've yeah. they've redone all of that. They've written everything and ordered it in a way that makes it a lot makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's and, lovely. Okay, it. it's cracking. Is it? Oh, there's there's Terry Crews. Yeah. So this is the weird thing. Um, throughout the book, they've got sort of like you know how in Pathfinder they had these like iconic characters. Yeah. And they sort of use them for all the examples and the artwork throughout the book. Um, they've done this here as well. Uh, for example, there's a person called Red who's like used in a lot of art. So it's a woman. She's on the front of the box on a oh, motorbike yeah, exactly. with a beam sword. Oh yeah. And fucking um, for some reason, there's a there's a black guy in there that looks exactly like Terry Crews. Exactly. It, like exactly like him. <laughs> that comes up a lot. And I'm fairly certain that to use a celebrity likeness, you do have to pay their agent. Like you can't just nick Terry Crews' face. Know about that? You, I mean, who nicks Terry Crews' face without at least paying for it? This is why. This is why you know in video games right whenever you see you play a video game of a film and they look nothing like the actor yeah, yeah that's yeah. why ah. so you can't just nick t- i think i think they've done a done a bad oh dear they've used his likeness a uh, terry cruz he's going to be having words and he's a man you don't want to fuck and off. the thing is as well it's not even like uh, oh yeah it looks a little bit like it's him. exactly <laughs> like him. and you, Photo might, you, might realism. Think, you might think oh it was a mistake when you see one that is loads of them but then Terry's there's loads there multiple of them. times <laughs> it's ridiculous man either that or imagine Terry Cruz just like announces on his Twitter next week that he actually does he's, he's Shane Hensley surprise yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like uh, it was me all along power <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier right I've got the Savage Worlds Essentials box set and you will be getting this one day at, one day when between now and finger, death when I pull my finger out and actually sort it out but yeah it's it's great but inside you get an action deck which is a deck of cards used for initiative it's like a, it's an oversized one yeah I'm not that big of a fan of that but then you get power cards status cards and tokens very well. good yeah a dice set with four wild dice 25 benny tokens mm-hmm. uh, acrylic templates for they're, explosives they're and really good yeah they are, are really good because often like for uh, you, you get different templates so for example a grenade will be on a medium burst, I think, yeah. and it explodes in a medium burst template, and you you need to cut like print them on paper and cut, cut them out. out into cards. But now we've got acrylic ones. Yeah, you got acrylic ones. Awesome. They're really cool. And spells use them too. Yeah. So, so you got the bla- you got the blast template. You got the uh, what is it like a cone? It's yeah, like a cone. cone kind of type print. But they're very good. They're plastic. They're they're acrylic, should I say? And they're yeah, just nice. normal ones, so you can use them for any type of game. And um, yeah, very very good. It's a very very welcome addition, I would say. Hell yeah! And you also get ammo and PowerPoint trackers. Yeah, they're These cool. Are pretty cool. They're they they're made of like some sort of durable cardboard, which is fine. I I think it'll be better if they were, you know, like you have you ever seen Hero Clicks? Yeah, exactly. That would be better. My like, only like gripe with that, right, is they're great and all, and they're wicked. But what they've done, they haven't pushed the pin tight enough, so that it, it spins they, they spin too around. easily. Yeah. So you can't like it, you, you literally you, knock you, it slightly, and it'll spin off. Handy tool, yeah. but they're not very well made. They're not made very well. No, yeah. which is kind of annoying. Um, the GM screen you get in there is pretty fucking yeah, nice. Yeah, screen's really nice. Um, you also get a, well, there's a couple of little books in there, so you get a world builders book, which is I love this kind of stuff. It's mm-hmm. like um, a bunch of articles from people that worked on Savage Worlds. You got Richard Wilcock did an article, Owen Lean, uh, a bunch of people I've never heard of, Clint Black, I think. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. it's really really fucking cool, and it's all advice on world building for for Savage Worlds. Make your own world, yeah. Stop yeah. buying pre-published stuff. Or you could you could use pre-published stuff because it also comes with a mini setting. Really? And I like these because um, I, I actually haven't read it to be fair, but I like this because they they're great little settings for one shots or building off of. Building off of yeah, jump yeah. off point yeah. That's what I I fucking love that and it's such a great idea. I mean I as I said I haven't actually read that bit so it might be fucking awful but I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's um, there and that's good. And you get an adventure deck as well. Yeah, so, you do. Yeah. But no yeah. more spending fucking fifty fucking quid trying to get one from America. You got one. You get one with it because they're a fortune and they're um, they're handy as hell. Actually, they're good fun, aren't they? The yeah. Decks. So essentially, based on your rank, you get you get an adventure card that you get given to you at the beginning of the game, and it mm-hmm. has some sort of cool effect. Yeah. And this can be anything from uh, you, a, you a, an old contact of That's yours helps the, you out. The classic. That's one. the classic Connection. one. Yeah. It could be the, the, that something you say gives the villain pause. That's one of the cards. Yeah, so, that's another. so they're shaken for. You the, can change your initiative. I, I think on one of them. Or yeah, or is but it, or now you can, you can do, do that anyway. Now, belly, but so. yeah, but they give you little mechanics. Or another one was like, oh, out. Do you remember out of the pa- uh, pan and into the fire? And it was like for you that situation, the situation. That's it. Yeah. But then something way worse happens later. Yeah, I, I used that in Warhammer, and I got I, I escaped the town being like fucking 
absolutely destroyed by Skaven, but I ended up in jail. Yeah, for like for two years. years. <laughs> yeah. It was fucking horrible. Oh, man. that was the worst. But um, yeah, they, those are awesome. They're, they they can make the game even more swingy, and it is fucking swingy. They can. Anyway. Yeah, that's very right. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, one of the one of my favourite uses I've ever seen of an adventure card was I was playing a Flash Gordon game at a con. And Pete was playing Flash Gordon. This was before Flash Gordon was an actual setting for Savage Worlds. Oh, that's so right. So he used Slipstream. And the guy gave him a trademark weapon, which was a football that he that he just belted at people's heads. <laughs> and Pete got the card that was um, with one, uh, one successful attack, you wipe out every... Um, extra in the room, <laughs> and and he 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 hurls it right. It hits one guy on the head, then bounces between the body, body yes. rebounds all over the place. He killed everyone in one ricochet. hit, and then Ming the Merciless was just stood there like, oh fuck, bye. And then <laughs> I, I jetpacked over to him and uh, chucked him off the edge of a mountain. Was that the one when he was on a little little bike? Yeah, Flash Gordon was on a little bike. Uh, no, that was that was the game I did, and he was on um he was on a flying. Uh, like f- yeah, it was called, it was the Scooty Puff Junior from <laughs> from Futurama, basically. And and they like the team were get oh, we've gone on such a tangent right now. But the team were like trying to get towards Ming the Merciless's palace, and they'd annoyed Flash Gordon early in the game. So he sidles up to their space plane, and he's like. <laughs> Just come along with this tiny little, tiny little Throwing thing. Throwing insults like, so. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> Fuck you, guys. And then one of the characters is like, "What this guy again?" And they all start. They're trying to, like, Ming the Merciless is like fucking turret. You'll never get into my tower. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, they they're shooting at Flash Gordon. Like, go try away. Try beef with Flash Gordon. Yeah. It was so funny, man. Mental. So that's the adventure deck. Um, but yeah, they, it's a fucking cool. It's good. Thing. It's a nice addition. But that's pretty much well, it well. For, for suede edition. Wait. Well, go. Wait. Go. Because what is the biggest improvement since the Deadlands Kickstarter? Uh, what did Pinnacle do to utilise something? I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. The bookmark. Oh! <laughs> so if you like, cast your mind back years and years and years ago to one of our early episodes where Nick, um, he ordered the Deadlands Classic Edition, which is a fucking beautiful book, and he... For his Kickstarter, for all the money that that got put into it, he got some bookmarks, and they they had, they had art on one side and advertising on the other, <laughs> and it was just an absolute joke. So now they've actually included, they've taken our advice, yeah. given us no fucking money for it. By you're the welcome, way. Pinnacle. Yeah, you're welcome, <laughs> you little bitch. <laughs> so, sorry, that, I got really we're angry. joking. We love you. Really. We love you. You're good. You're really good. Sometimes. Um, so, yeah, on the back of these bookmarks, now you actually have useful ones. And I actually use this. This It's got a little raise calculator hey, on there. You've got there you common go. ranged attack modifiers, Brilliant. common statuses, the injury table, which you roll when a character becomes incapacitated. So, yeah, it was actually handy in the end. They so, actually yeah, did something. They did it. They listened to us. That's and, the number um, one improvement. Our agents are being in touch. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, so uh, overall, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, how do you, how do you rate it? It's very good. It's uh, very good. I mean... <laughs> Savage Worlds was probably our first proper thought. Of it. Well, not you, but for me, especially into role playing. For, uh, Savage Worlds always going to have a close uh, little place in my heart. Uh, the community is incredible, and I think it's, I think it's, it's very much this whole box, this 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 new adventure edition box set is like a a, ve- a very nice thing for the community. I guess I think it's what they've been waiting for. They fi- yeah, they finally <clears throat> sort of uh, that that essentials box set and and the the fresh coat of paint to the book, the rewriting of a lot of and changes of the rules. Like, yeah. A and lot they listened it, as well. They listened to feedback. They really did. And uh yeah, it's been it's it's uh, they finally made it what everyone it wanted it to been. be. Yeah. yeah. So this is what Savage World should have been from the get go. And let me say like Deluxe is fucking awesome. If yeah. you can if you can pick up a copy of that and and don't want to spend the extra money on uh, on uh, adventure edition because this is thirty quid, mm-hmm. whereas deluxe is a tenner and even well, cheaper book, now. That hardback book yeah. is thirty pound. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. I mean, it's standard price for a role playing game, and, it, yeah. and now they've made it so it looks like a proper role playing game, which yeah. is awesome. Yep. But if you can pick up deluxe, deluxe is fine, man. Like, like we've been playing it for three and a half years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, and there's honestly, it's absolutely fine. It's a good system, and then the new one is literally a good system that's been improved on. The, the thing that makes it. me laugh though is I, I love fucking Savage Worlds. I love it so much, yeah. and this is why I'm so critical of Pinnacle because I really be. want it to be the best the best game be, out there right? yeah, yeah. and, it, and it, it kind of is for it me is. but yeah, the thing about is. it is is that um, I liked it right because what happened during this when the PDF first came out of this fucking game yeah. um, first of all they were like okay it's come out right and it's mostly finished so so, so that's it and then they went okay two versions later and they went uh, okay it's this is it's finally done stop it it's no, done no changes are happening <laughs> I went on there f- uh, I went on to fucking Lulu ordered myself a little a little dodgy print copy oh, yeah. right and then 
fucking he goes no I weren't the final version fucking five more fucking versions later right and the, finally the hardback book comes out <laughs> finally it comes out and then guess what happens he goes no there was a couple of mistakes mate no we, we, well, they call it a corrector random or whatever they call it yeah oh god I can't remember um, no when they bring out a thing to say yeah we've done a few was well, there more mess ups in it yeah yeah so what, typos or uh, it was like he ch- he's, he's balance changes he's altered edges and shit ah. and I'm like you fucking kidding me it, it, so, so now you've got this like you have to have this like hobo sheet of paper along with your brand new lovely book Aww. and uh, it was just like so um, I think there was somebody and I'm not going to name them but somebody uh, uh, told me that of all the versions there have been if you include the, the beta ones that were available to the public there's been 11 versions of this of this new of this edition new one. Whoa. And like I said, when I saw the uh, oh god I can't even remember what it's called now the, when you have the, the extra rules on a bit of paper fucking hell okay, that's so stupid of me, appendix but, yeah something like that but whatever when he, he gave you this sheet to print off the the latest change to the fucking book I just went no I'm just using the book I've had enough uh, that's it so if you haven't bought it yet maybe wait a little bit longer yeah. <laughs> no he said he's not going to include it that's in print it. oh yeah, okay yeah, so yeah. what's out there is out there. well yeah because he's just probably printed a million books off yeah so but anyway, go get it, regardless of the little prob- errors. That's it's, it, that's it all it is. It doesn't matter. It's still a fantastic... And you will get years and years and years and years and years of gaming out of this. Well, and yeah, it's, and uh, it the would... best setting in the world it, it for um, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition is coming out. Well, it's out now, Wise Guys. So on, I would say get this and get Wise Guys, because the two go hand in hand. Because you've got cards, you've got poker chips, you know, all this shit. So, um, yeah. It's the whole, it's it's the whole, whole kit and caboodle, back. mate. It's well, fantastic. Probably come back with a Wise Guys review Oh, next. of course. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Go check it out. Yeah. Where's the dagger? It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. Give me the dagger. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for something different. <laughs> We're going to play a game of niche to see that. <laughs> so, if you know Wi-Fi Signal, where I get my wife to describe the covers of books, it's basically that, but I did it with my niece. Hey. And... Um, instead of books, it's uh, it's the classes from D and D. Okay. So you have to yeah. guess which class she's talking about. Right. Go. Um, white hair. Um, elf is. He's holding a guitar behind his neck. He's wearing a robe with a satchel. Mm-hmm. Um, there's purple and red. There's a flute recorder thingy, my bob. Um, <laughs> well, that's a bard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, that's a bard. Uh, we'll go to the next one. He also has elf ears. Um, he has a eagle on his hand. He's very purple. He's got a s- stick thing. He's wearing a sort of cloak. He's wearing purple gloves. He has a white streak in his hair and a plait. Rogue? It is not. Oh! I, I actually am struggling to remember which one that was, and I think it was the warlock. Oh, because, yeah, he's got falcon on his hat. He's got hood, purple robes on. Yep. Yeah. He's very purple. Is it purple? It's a woman. She has long brown hair. She has fire coming out of her hands. She's wearing yellow and red and purple. She has a long skirt on and a belt with things on. She has bandages, I think, on her arms and long brown boots. Paladin? No, that oh. was a sorcerer. Ah, yeah, yeah. The, th- the the one that gives it away is the 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 bright clothes. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. you're right. She's got a belt with things on. Things on. Yep. This is the f- this is the final one. Okay. His skin looks grey. He has a hood up with a red rim. He's holding daggers. Yeah. Um. He's wearing armor. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um. With red things on them. He looks like he's wanting to murder someone. He sounds so old now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's a thief. Uh, close enough. I'll give you a point for that because it's the rogue. They don't. Rogue. It used to be called thief back oh. in the day, but it's yeah, it's a rogue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that she said he looks like he wants to murder someone. Looks like he wants like, to murder someone. I think. I think they've what done. What book did you use? Uh, it was the, the fifth edition book. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I had it with me for the game. Obviously. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah, of course. Duh. But yeah, that was that was a fun one, man. That was like, good. She she didn't really describe what they're like. She just sort of went like, he's wearing a yellow thing. He's got a yellow thing on. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The caution that you lose, do you, you know, know this place between the flame? But the, the boy, boy is tough. The boy came with the big cars, friends. Defend. One became a guy because I was crazy. Insane in the membrane. Brain in the oven. So here we are, listeners. We're going to play a game of brain in the oven. 
And burning the oven, it comes from the fact that we used to play a game at work where I would translate song lyrics over and over again till it was unrecognisable and my colleagues had to guess what the song was. And uh, Insane in the Brain got changed to Brain in the Oven. <laughs> and we're going to play a round of that now. So Nick has um, tra- done that, given that treatment oh, yeah. to the blurbs, the backs of role-playing Been games. Been in the lab this morning. Yep, and I have to guess which ones they are. <laughs> okay, right, ready? Oh yeah, first one. It did not harm because of the panic behind the atomic bomb. The educational film shows how to prevent a nuclear explosion by moving a few inches of wood under a table. In the movie, (laughs) normal 130 SS and 080, so are replaced by the normal horror by the length. For those that can't understand Croydon, uh, the last word was length. Length, yeah, I can't length. do G's, H's, F's. It's always, uh, whenever we're playing, strength, playing. strength, strength. <laughs> strength. I think that was, I think that was Mutant Year Zero. No. Oh, am I wrong? I went for, I went for obscure games, sorry. Oh, shit. That was Atom Age Cthulhu. Oh my god. You create a nuclear explosion by moving a small bit of wood, small under, bit of wood a under a table. Yeah, I love it. All right, All right next one. Go. Okay, you ready? You must capture the best, and that means participating in many different automated duels in the world of car warfare and putting oh. yourself in the test in every position possible. I know what it is. Go on. Car wars. Yeah, well done. Yeah. I know, I know. A little bit of a giveaway. I know. The car warfare one. Yeah, I know, I know. Next one. In an original about private and political fantasy, you survive. It is in who fights against you as control over control. Are you divided? <laughs> control over control. <laughs> We've got to control this control. You're never it's getting gonna, out of control. I'm never going to get this because it has no relevance to what it is at all. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just go for a wild stab in the go dark. On. Ravenloft. No. Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> What? Oh, oh, you know, in the original about private and political fantasy, I could have, I, I could have got that because it's, it's a very political game. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, right, I, I done goofed. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna get it straight away, but it's brilliant. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Wisdom guys stunned many Yankees in Las Vegas and handcuffed Martin Kwasaska's neat money-grabbing Quentin <laughs> Tarantino, 90s dog reservoir, a canon at least still. It is goodness of doctrine of faith and also a human as well as a camel wada. So that was wise, guys. <laughs> but I like th- I like that Google tra- Translate changed Martin Scorsese's name. Yeah. Martin Kwasaska. But Martin Kwasaski. <laughs> <laughs> Neat money grabbing Quentin Tarantino's 90s dog reservoir. That sounds horrible. <laughs> dog reservoir. Just a reservoir full of dogs. And it just says Hakana, or at least still, is a goddess, a doctrine of faith, and also a human being as well as a camel wander. A camel <laughs> I think I put it into some kind of. Oh, uh, no, I've just seen the answer to the next oh, one. Oh, no. You shouldn't have given that. me your phone. Oh, uh, never mind. Anyway. That's fine. So that was a good segment, man. I've got to read the last one out anyway. Yeah, funny. let's do it as a little bonus. Zerleg is your best friend. You tell Hell Hetley, the official system of genuine alive genera, dead ends, rippers, phantoms, 50 Fahrenheit, the great guy, ignoring the pathology of the problem, the Telegoose leader is in charge of the board. Okay, so that was Savage Worlds Deluxe then. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw on the back a mighty barbarian. What does it say? It says... Um, so it says Zerleg is your best friend Zerleg is your best friend what the fuck does that even mean you you tell Hell Hittel this is in uh, I think this is in Samoan uh, uh, Samoan's o- a good one man the official system of genuine alive genera that's got to be fast furious fun I think you know um, uh, one of my favourite thing about all of this was that it was wise guys being called wisdom guys wisdom guys <laughs> I'm definitely when we play that I'm definitely going to be calling it wisdom guys we need guys. to talk to Eric and just tell him that he's got it all wrong it needs yep. to be wisdom, guys. It's a real shame. It's a real shame that we have to name our episodes after the thing, <laughs> after the main subject, because I think uh, I think wisdom, guys, would make a great. No one would listen to it. <laughs> It'd be great. But no, no. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna say this right now. Got if it. we were reviewing wise guys for the next episode, we'll call the episode wisdom guys. Let's see if Eric gets the up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good segment, man. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, next up, we're gonna play a bit of Jim Bim Salabim. <laughs> <laughs> of <course> we are. <laughs> So this is Jim Bim Salabim. Now, at our table, Nick, as you are very well aware, we have a lot of slang that only we say. <laughs> yes, yeah, like true. like things like bongo, bongus, things like this. Chungus. The the worst of all being Chottingham, <laughs> which. <laughs> 
<laughs> which stupid. Th- where it came from was us saying uh, it was shot. Oh, it was in oh nice shot. Yeah, n- as in nice shot. And then it was shotting them. And then for some reason it got changed to chotting them. And, and I'm was... not sure when. Oh god, but... <laughs> chotting them on C. Um, stupid. Yeah, really stupid. <laughs> anyway, what I've done is I've got some RPG slang and RPG terms. And you have to guess if it is a real term mm-hmm. or if it's a Jim Bim Salabim, oh, which, is, okay. which is one that I've made up. Very good. Jim Bim Salabim, I should explain, is a term that we say at the table. It originally started off as a, as a move. A special move <laughs> that, that Jimmy and Bimmy used to do. And it's called the Jim Bim Salabim. <laughs> yeah. All right, the first one is blue booking. Is that real or is that a Jim Bim Salabim? Uh, blue booking. I reckon that's real. It is. Yeah, and I if I be. recall correctly, blue booking is when... Somebody makes out of game like extensive, extensive out of game notes about their character, and even has them do stuff while they're not playing the game. Oh well, wow. okay. I think that's what it is. Yep. Uh, the next one, next one is ethnic tennis. <laughs> it sounds right. No, no, it's not. No, that is a Jim Beam Salabim. <laughs> I made that one up. Uh, mob snobbery. Real. No, that I made that oh, one up too. Oh, you got me. Yeah. Um, twink. And I don't mean a sexy gay dude. I was about to say, isn't that a weird... I, I, I've heard the word before. Is that what that is? The yeah, other word for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. so. I've heard it in films. Um, I, <laughs> I'm going to say real. It is real. And uh, what it means... I'm not sure why it's got given that name, but it means an excessively overpowered character. Like oh, somebody's really? uh, Usually intentionally. On purpose. Uh, yeah, a rule breaker. Um, it's also used in like MMORPGs as well. Like uh, a twink is a low-level le- low character who's exceedingly powerful for okay. some reason. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, next one is Monty Hall and at Hall as in a, a big hall of, of stuff. stuff yeah yeah I got yeah. Monty Hall I've got to say it's real it is real and it refers to Monty Hall I think he was a designer on d and I can't remember right. but he's a famous writer and it, it it's what it means is somebody that has um, excessive uh, um, overwhelming amounts of loot oh that, that's a Monty Hall like a like a like a fantasy hoarder. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I gotcha. Uh, grungle skunking. No, that's you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with grungle in it. <laughs> I know you took too long, mate. You got that real quick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Social justice warrior. As in, somebody worries a lot. <laughs> Rather than getting that, actually doing anything about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll say it's real. <laughs> no, I made that one. Ah! I, I reckon it's probably been used elsewhere on stuff. Yeah. But yeah, social justice warrior I made up. That's good. Uh, emergency break. Uh, I reckon that's real, and I reckon that's like a uh, X card. No, uh, okay. it is real, but it is um, what it is is... And we have somebody at our table that does this. Somebody that doesn't think of what they're going to do on their turn, so the game comes to a screeching halt. Because That's they an emergency uh, break. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah fair well, what, what can I do? And an emergency break sheet. in narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the final one is fantasy heartbreaker. <gasps> that's that has to be real. Please tell me that's real. It is, and and it's a system that is designed where the, it is clear that the player has only really played D&D and they just try to change mechanics. It's, and it's like a, a system where it's just basically house rule D&D. Oh, and they right. usually end up in, in like bargain bins at RPG stores. <laughs> yeah, I've got you. Yeah. I mean, I was very badly described, but that was basically... No, I like it, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's fun. That was a good segment. I'm going to give Jim Bim Salad Bim a go. That's, that's good. Well, I think... Uh, Maybe one more. <laughs> I did I did pretty much use up all of the RPG slang. That's slaggers. all the RPG slang. I might have to do something Yeah, because there were others like... Obviously, the other ones were like HP for hit points. Or, Rule lawyer. Or like, yeah, rules lawyer. Or, and like the ones everyone knows. But yeah, blue booking and... Blue stuff. booking, yeah, that's cool. I, I'm, I'm going to try and think of something for ethnic tennis. but I uh, Or grungle skunking. <laughs> <laughs> grungle skunking yeah no idea what that grungle skunking what it could be yeah but Getting anyway too, too drunk and smashed at the table could be grungle skunking yeah <laughs> um, that's Jim Bim Salabim we're going to move on to electro letters oh yeah loads in the future you will be able to send a letter or parcel from anywhere on the planet this sir is the electro letter yeah, we got shitloads yeah. for this one. So this is Electro Letters, and what I asked you guys was, what's the stupidest move you've ever seen someone take in an RPG? <laughs> and fucking hell, these are good, man. Yeah. Some of them are quite long, but we'll, we'll get through them. Yeah. First one comes in from Owen Lean. He says, when a Sabbat bishop is anointed in Vampire the Masquerade, they go through a ceremony They go through a ceremony called the bloodbath, where they, funnily enough, bathe in a huge pool of blood and then drink it all. Mm. 
I was playing a Sabat game during a vampire LARP, and during such a ceremony, one player jumped into the pool and activated blood form. They were they were then instantly diabolized, which means eaten, by the incumbent bishop. <laughs> we'll have no idea why he did this. <laughs> just, <laughs> we still have no idea. Like, I want to be part of him. And he just jumps in and gets drunk. <laughs> Drink, drinked. Drinked up. Weird. Drinked up. Yeah, what a fucking idiot. Oh my god, right. So next one is uh, Timothy E. Pier. Uh, it said, During a game of Tavern Towers using the Dungeons and Dragon in 40,000 setting, a player new to my group who had never played RPGs before, the party, which was made of a judge, as in a judge dread judge, <laughs> of the nice. Adeptus Arbites, a Warforged Transformer super soldier, a Demi Lich and fuckboys character a space ninja uh, we were in void warfare with Decepticons over the crystal sphere of a dead world on which the Demi Lich was gathering a specific artifact for his library ship uh, we were ambushed as we attempted to transition into the warp after a pitch battle and boarding action by my judge and ninja and warforged the ninja decided to overload the enemy ship's warp drives only the warforged was not dragged into the warp due to good rolls and use of traits the fuckboy did this because because he because he thought that if he was the only survivor he would win in quotes he stole from the dm's housemate who fuckboy was dating at the time so we never saw him again oh my god so he killed everyone by and robbed him in real life yeah and then rob no, it seems like he robbed his own girlfriend because he says that he stole from my dm's housemate who was fuck oh no 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 who fuckboy so was he's, dating all oh, right yeah yeah so he stole from the house that they were playing in so he kills everyone steals from their house I wow. mean that is that's a pretty bad one, but I like I like the fact that they were trying to get away from a warp like this warp <laughs> hole was uh, open up and they're like quick start the engines and then he just he just presses the off button on the ship and he's like ha ha you're fucking out go, yeah. I win at RPGs and the Decepticons got I'm him. taking this toaster woo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, See you, losers! That's how I like to picture it. They did it really openly and ran out. Later! <laughs> See you later, nerds! He just flips the table and just runs off of the uh, yeah the microwave under his arm. The next one comes in from Yorkus Rex. Yes. And he's talking about a hank- Hackmaster tournament at a convention. Oh, wow. And he's just written this all like a big conversation. So um, it goes... You enter a large cavern. In the centre is a wide pool of lava. A monstrous demonic form rises from the centre and bellows, Prepare to die, mortal scum, as it lifts a burning axe above his head. I'll rush up and hit it with my longsword. Okay, you run into the lava and die. What? But no, I didn't say I was running into the lava. You most certainly did. You're dead. It's Hackmaster. Deal with it. Bullshit. Fuck this. I'm going to the dealer's hall. Yo. GM, did a sword go into? It's a sweet sword, and I'm grabbing it if it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Actually, can all can all correspondence come in in this form from now on? I like that. That was fun. That was good, man. <laughs> we should do Tales from the Table and just reenact small Oh, that would be awesome. Um, talking. But you know, I, I, I love that. that like, the, the, it's only in fucking role-playing games do you see that, where some somebody dies, and it's like your uh, backstory is that we've been friends for 20 years, and as soon as he dies, he's like, can I have his stuff? Yeah, do you need that? Do you need that broadsword? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Can we just stop? And I know. appreciate who's back. He's back. The prodigal son returns. Oh yeah, it's Zach Jenkins. <laughs> he's back. He's, he's back. Out of he's jail. out of prison. <laughs> he's out of jail. Or he, well, he's broken out of jail. One of our super fans, Zach Jenkins, is back. Lifer. Lifer. Oh, I love this guy. Than one. I love this guy, but he's got to stop committing crimes. <laughs> well, jail. Welcome back, Zachary. And he says, a game of D&D where the party wizard walked into a group of seven will-o'-wisps then fireballed on themselves. <laughs> the wizard went unconscious and all the will-o'-wisps passed. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What an idiot. Whoa, mate. Daniel Irwin comes in with a good one. So he, he says... A Shadowrun game from many years ago, before mobile phones and internet were an actual thing. It's relevant later. First adventure, the group had not met each other before and were all summoned to a junkyard to get their assignment. They all eyed each other up warily as they were briefed and then seemed to come to an agreement that they would do the job together. Satisfied, they all jumped in their various vehicles and went off in different directions. The one small problem is none of them have thought to swap any contact details of any description and had no concept of just googling someone. Google did not exist back then. So then they just spent half of the session simply trying to figure out who the fuck they were even supposed to be networking <laughs> with and then track each other down. Needless to say, the rest of the run did not go smoothly. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Oh, God. So anyway, we'll see you later. Oh, fuck. Did anyone... It's like in The Apprentice when they go, uh, did you actually tell her what time we'd be back? It's like, oh, no. 
Yeah, yeah. They they always always well, do like. Did shit. you even get a number of what they? Did you ask how many they want? Uh, oh no. Yeah, if you didn't notice, listener, Nick and I are apprentice super fans. Yeah, we are. We fucking love, love that Go show. Check it out. Not the American one, the English one. Yeah, the American one had Trump in it. Can you? Believe I know. It? Somebody I know. who was in the Apprentice went on to be a president. I can't believe that shit. Oh no. I oh, know. Um, anyway, the final one comes in, Sid Andrews. He says, in a D&D second edition campaign, one person was playing a halfling fighter. We're in a haunted castle with traps everywhere, and he decides that everyone is being too slow and cautious. He said, I've got enough hit points, I'll go first. I took off down the corridor. The trap triggered, the hallway tilted. He went sliding down while the next person in marching order was able to jump back. He slid into a pit at the bottom, taking damage from the fall. And the bottom four feet of the pit was filled with acid. <laughs> he died from being fully submerged in acid. Oh. And he was only three feet tall and couldn't get his armour off in time. Oh, that sounds so sad. <laughs> I'm mad! Fuck this, I've got hit points. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Melts. <laughs> oh, mate, that's brilliant. Nice one, Sid. What's the stupidest thing you've ever seen somebody do in a game? I mean, we, there's got to be some great fucking examples. Oh, the best one ever is no one will ever, 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 ever get close to it, I don't think. And it's, I close the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because essentially what it was was there was a, there was a bomb inside this house that was about to, about to go off. Somebody opened the drawer. There was a bomb in there. It was a baby s- trap, wasn't it? It started ticking. Yeah, it started ticking. And then um, the, it literally what happened was, as I said, right, what do you all do? And we sort of went into like slow-mo and I said, get out! Uh, yeah, and everyone was like, get out! And I point at Nick, he goes, I run away. I point at James, he goes, I run away. Sean, I run away. I point at Ryan, he goes, I close the door. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, I, and then I just, everyone, st- they were about to say something. I went, no, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Let's let him figure this out. And, and I said, right, Ryan, are you sure that's what you want to do? And he went, yeah, yeah. of course I fucking do. I'll yeah. close the fucking door. And I went, now what? And he goes, well, I'll wait. And I'm He's like, like okay. are you sh- are you sure? And everyone's like, huh? and I'm like, no. Nope, <laughs> and then I'll just go, right, you wait. You continue waiting. You hear the bomb ticking. And he's like, yeah. You hear the bomb ticking. Yeah. <laughs> the bomb explodes. You die. What? <laughs> and he's like, what? What the fuck? And it's like, well, dude, you never said you came out. You just said you closed the door. And so then we was visualising what might, we saw. It might seem like I was being finicky. No. But the reason I, I, I did it and I asked people what they wanted to do mm-hmm. was because I, it, it went, we went into slow-mo. And I'm like, okay, you want to run? Maybe if somebody wants to pick up the bomb, chuck it out of the back. I want, I want specifics on what you're doing. Yeah. And all he said was well, he closed, closed the door. So and we, we gave him infinity fucking yeah, chances did, to, yeah. to take that yeah. back. It was the first session of a new character. It was a new game. Everyone a new character. It was Dr. Twist. And... Um, and basically, yeah, all we saw in game was like all these heroes like jump out of this building, turn around and see this big like baby just look at them and slowly just shut the door, and then the whole house just exploded. <laughs> you know, I, find, tear in its eye. I find it funny because listeners that aren't aware of who Doctor Twist is, they don't know that he was like you just say a giant baby got caught in an explosion. Oh my god! Yeah, it was. A, oh my god! It's the most what? bizarre character ever. We have talked about him before, but um, it was a GURPS sci-fi game, and yeah. it's kind of an anything goes type sci-fi universe, a bit like. <laughs> Futurama, yeah. like the and and the way he built his race is that he was a failed clone of a human who was accidentally made with gigantism, but it was also a baby. Yeah, and so he was small and, and, and he giant. was so sheltered. All he ever grew up with was one DVD of Oliver Twist and Doctor Dre's The Chronic 2001 so album. His his vernacular, <laughs> the way he spoke, was like he was either in like go blimey governor or, or break or, yourself fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the weirdest character but the thing is the character he rolled up afterwards was a character that, that was a car, car salesman who was obsessed with dinosaurs and his dream was to uh, become surgically altered and become a raptor oh my and god then, and then what happened was is that he died the character died not in game this is all backstory he yeah. died and then his family um, all pulled money together and had his brain implanted into a raptor into a raptor yeah Rai's got a bit too much imagination I that's, think. The problem. <laughs> that's the problem like, uh, I mean we had some weird characters in there but that takes the fucking right paddle. takes the cake I don't know what he was smoking that month <laughs> it was bad so he came with Dr. Twist then this raptor bloke <laughs> raptor and, uh, yes but that was genuinely the stupidest thing I've ever seen for me seen yeah I don't think anyone's beaten that I'm sure there's a couple of very close contenders because I know I've done a few silly things I'm sure Sean has before and I think James has oh James shooting the petrol station was pretty mental that was kind of stupid yeah because yeah, there was a gas station in Fallout and it, he you know in in a gas station you're not even allowed to smoke a cigarette let alone let off or a have fucking your phone gun. on like don't get out on your phone apparently and fucking I was I, I went up to the window of this gas station we're trying to stealthily get in <laughs> and like see if there's any cans of beans and shit in there and James was like right I fire my fucking beam cannon at it and it was like a pulse rifle it, it, it fired it like basically fired gun, Hadoukens it? yeah. it's like 
It f- this thing shoots fire. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with Let's you? Let's point it at the flammable building. Yeah, and he pointed it, and then and Sean was like, right. Uh, he, 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 he was trying to break the window so I could get in. And and he goes, and then the GM goes, okay, there's a small fire started in the gas station. What do you want to do? And I go, of course, I said, I want to run away. And James was like, it would not set on fire. It would not. And we're like, um... I shut up, up. you just shot a fireball at a fucking gas station <laughs> of course it goes on fire that was pretty mental and also uh, oh Sean's Sean's flying through the air with the sword was pretty mental as well oh. I remember when he was trying to um... I don't know if that was stupid much less that it was heroic because what he was trying to do was they were riding on the back of a dragon that kind of belonged I to I think them. the outcome was more it was pretty bad stupid, yeah, than what the actual intention they had this, was they had yeah. this bell that could return them to a certain place and what Sean did was he, he he jumped off the back of the dragon and wanted to freeze the dragon's breath with his cold sword that was it of course that's not how the sword worked <laughs> at all and um, he wanted to then u- use the breath as a slide to slide <laughs> into the fucking um, he ended up just missing and just going Aah. yeah so he did it he just, he just his first his first actually just jumped off a dragon and <laughs> and then, of course, you rang the bell. Turned up, oh, turned up back at home. I've done some another, I mean, we're well. we probably going on too long here. Yeah. But another one I did, uh, did one, one, another one I thought of was in Fallout when we tried to disarm uh, an active nuclear bomb that we found, <laughs> and we we were novice characters. We had no idea how to do it. That was but a TPK, wasn't it? It was. Well, of course, we set up a fucking nuke. <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> We, we had to then restart the game again, but a hundred <laughs> years later. hundred years later. After the fallout had calmed down a bit. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like <laughs> Fallout 2. Like, it happened again. Yeah. Fuck, that was stupid. Oh, dear. So we're all, we're all guilty of it. Yeah, we've all done stupid shit. Me more than anyone else, no, probably. No, I'm not there. But that's it for another episode. Thank <sighs> you very much for your electro letters. Yeah. Let's do an outro. Mm-hmm. I'm Boris Johnson, and I listen to the 3T RPG podcast. Yeah, that was Boris Johnson's voice you just heard there. <laughs> It's real, legit. Prime Minister of the UK. So, oh God. So, uh, what we'll do now is uh, we'll give some contact information. Uh huh. You can email us at 3trpgpod at gmail.com mm-hmm. or you can go onto any of the social on media. We're on there. We're on the socials. And although we usually shout out our Patreon and ask people to donate if they want to, we're not going to do that this time. No. Although I sort of subtly have just done it there. Ah, it's whoops, clever, clever, right? Smart. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do, the listeners, is to try and share this with a mate that you think will like it yeah. this time. Because Please do. we we want to get so famous. Have you seen that fucking meme? You know the one, I just want to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> no, I've seen that one. <laughs> I'll play that at the Is end that what we want to do? That's what we want to do. We want to blow up and and act like, like we, we don't, don't know nobody, nobody. <laughs> it's so good man <laughs> um, so yeah that's what we want to do so share this with a mate and uh, yeah get the word out there get the good word of the pod and out there we will there. shout the shit out of you if you do yeah we will let us know you've done it send us proof and yeah. we will we will make you our new god yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go my main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> Remember to come to Dragon Meat and play in Tough Guys and Whacked in the Wicket. Um, a great adventure mm-hmm. and, a, and a very fun setting that I, we're going to be demoing. So please yeah. come. And if you do come and if you do manage to get into our games, you get a prize. Yeah, we got freebies. We, we got, got freebies. freebies for you. We so, got freebies. Yeah, come along. And uh, that's it for another episode. I've been Harrison Hunt. I've been Nick Lambslice. And remember that D20s are cool. But 20 Ds, now that's a good time. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>